Hello, my friends, and welcome to China versus Korea week 81. This tournament is meant to pit Chinese professional StarCraft players against Korean professionals, uh, generally in a bit of a lower tier than what we're used to, not quite ASL rank, but up and coming strong pro Korean players uh, who can give these guys a run for their money in a bid to try to increase the overall skill level of the Chinese and eventually get them into ASL, get them up to those higher echelons. Uh, because just playing against them in the ASL or trying to beat them online uh, in a non-tournament format in the ladder, for example, is not a recipe for success uh, long term. And you know, generating strong players in the in in the Chinese scene, you need to play tournament games against people who are strong, but aren't crazy strong. People who you can compete with at a similar level and attempt to learn from the games. Like if you're just playing against someone who's way better than you, for example, let's say you're like B rank or C rank even, and you're playing against an S rank player. It's hard to really learn anything and some of the same things do apply to like a really strong pro Chinese player and a really strong pro Korean player. Like it's hard to learn anything from playing against these guys if you're only getting a couple of games against them, for example, in the ASL qualifier. You need to continuously practice and I'm trying to get this intro out, but we've already got a gateway over here. Coming from Xiaogege. It means little older brother. Xiaogege. The Chinese name. He's going up against the Jehovah's Witness 4040. He comes over. He knocks on the front door. And blasts down that gateway with a bunch of SCVs. A bunch of followers here. Just going to go ahead. Pilgrimize that uh, gateway. It has now been successfully converted and he will continue on with this game. This is kind of a raw opener for Xiao Ge Ge. Like this has not gone well. He's going to make a gateway back at home and it looks like a Nexus. But when you lose your gateway this early and you're definitely going to lose your pylon as well. Not right away, but it's going to happen sooner or later. It is bad news bears for a Protoss. He starts his gateway going to start a zealot as well. SCV is going to come up here and uh, see the timing on the Nexus. And we're just going to go ahead and kill this pylon as quickly as we can. Try to supply block the Protoss. If he gets the Nexus done before the pylon's done, then he doesn't have any gap in his production. So we really want to kill that off as soon as possible. Supply block him a little bit. Xiaogogo is going to start a pylon preemptively to try and mitigate that. And then his Nexus will be done. And he should be able to get, you know, full production going once again. See, no block in the production. I'm going to go ahead and throw down a Cybernetis Core. A little bit surprised that he didn't go for Forge here because here is the uh, attack from Jehovah's Witness. Man, he's pulling all the boys. He's sending his entire force of pilgrims across the map. We just cannot wait to tell him the good name. Here we go. Zealot's getting right on top of this. Ooh, this is rough. This has not gone well. Looks like the SCVs just didn't control well enough. Now they're doing a pretty good job blocking this Zealot, but he's already killed quite a few of these Marines. And he can come in and block like further reinforcements. Just walk right in here, start to kill uh, Marines as they come across. And that's exactly what he's going to do. A bunker has finished, but can he actually get anything inside of there? With the probes out, blocking, and the Zealot coming up? I don't know if it's going to be possible. Great surround on this Marine. It does manage to escape. A lot of probes are starting to fall. Another Zealot pops out though. Can he get over here and stop these Marines from getting in that bunker? Ooh, great block by Xiao Ge Ge, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Can he actually stop this one Marine? Marine going to get inside the bunker. Two Marines in that bunker with almost no HP. Going to work now on these SCVs, trying to fight them. 
pick as many of them off as he can, but he's already lost a ton of probes. And it looks like JW4040 will likely take this game away. It was kind of an intense back and forth there for quite some time. A lot of SCVs were pulled, man. And look at how many are very low. Like a lot of these have almost no HP. And they're gonna be sent back home. ACC is done. Shao Gugu leaves this game. And he takes the L here with Korea going up 1-0. All right, game number two with Stone spawning in the top left-hand corner. We've got Kid down here in the bottom right. Am I, am I right about that? Yes, it is Kid. Been watching him a little bit. We saw him in week number 80. A very good Chinese Zerg player and a Korean Protoss. I'm really excited about this week, this lineup, because there are a ton of Zerg players on the Chinese squad. And there's no Zerg players in the Korean squad, so we're not going to get any ZVZ, and we're going to get a ton of Zerg matchups. Should be a lot of fun. Guys, if you haven't seen this before, the way it works is very similar to Pro League. First, we start off with uh, some predetermined matchups. Uh, each of the players play. There's four players on either team. The matchups are played out. It's a best of seven. Uh, if one squad just wipes the entire other squad then uh they will win of course get the the four four wins in a row but if it hasn't been concluded at the end of four games then they're gonna do a, a dice roll or a a roulette wheel spin to figure out which matchups will be replayed and i'll talk about round number two when we get to that point but that's where we're at right now kid is only gonna play against stone jw is only gonna play against shaoguga in these in the first round but things can change in round number two now opening up here with an overpool kid is going to find his opponent in the top left we are on citadel starting to look towards grabbing that natural may end up having to take the uh second base at the third though let's see if he ends up going there could send out another drone yeah he'll probably just take the natural now uh since this drone is being tr chased so heavily it's gonna arrive at about the same time as the one in the natural so might as well take the natural looking good here for sh for kid uh we saw him last week perform very very well had a lot of different games with kid involved and he was able to take some pretty interesting wins he had a good style he's not afraid to do things like uh, get burrow versus Terran he's not afraid to uh, pull out those fancy plays and unused upgrades to try and take an advantage in these series Ooh, almost gets the probe probe very low this was a gateway into Nexus. Here for Stone, and Stone gonna block the ramp as you do. Not the greatest block on the ramp. You really want the probe behind the Zealot so that they can't easily target that down. He's gonna get into the correct position right as the Lings come up, but he's not able to properly block, and two Lings will make it their way into that main base. Let's see what kind of damage they can do. I'll try my best to not miss anything here. As the Lings run around inside the main. And these Lings start to pile up at the front. More and more Lings are being made. And Ling speed starts. He hasn't made a layer just yet. And he's focusing on just pumping out Lings. This could be an all-in from Kid. And I wouldn't blame him for doing so either. Since he's got these Lings inside the main. He's going to be able to kill one of the Zealots. And he can threaten to kill... SCVs or sorry probes while more lings that are f coming into the front here are going to be able to threaten the pylon and if the pylon goes down this will almost certainly be a kid victory but so far stone handling it relatively well look he's going to get another kill on another ling makes it that much weaker more and more links are being made but the cannon has started and I don't think we're going to be able to run by again here okay there's the ling speed this is the moment draw the zealots way back into the main base and then run in with all the links bring the links from the front 
and the links from the back to the cannon to pick that off. I think that's what we're going to see here. Stone is not ready for this. He's going to throw down another building here at the front, but those links inside the main come to the cannon and pick that off. Now they can run back up into the main. This has just been delayed that much more. Cybernetics core here. Going after some probes now in the main base, taking away some of that attention from Stone, continuing with the Link production. If this doesn't work, we're gonna see Kid forced out of this game, but I've got, a, I've got a good feeling that this is gonna end up working for him. Gonna jump on top of the cannon once again. He will get the gateway for sure. That gateway is going down 100%, but that's a lot of probes and a lot of zealots to be fighting purely with the links. He goes after the cannon. Can he actually pick it off here? No, he cannot. That is unfortunate. The cannon will finish. And with the cannon finishing up, I don't think there's a play to get back in this game. He does run a couple of links by. He gets on top of the cannon, but immediately with the probes able to stop that, there's enough zealots here now that he should be able to block up this entrance. And dude, Kid is gonna try and take a third. Ah, uh, man, this really, this is really rough. Look at what we've got. It was eight drones to 24 a second ago. Now 11 to 25, it still doesn't look that much better. Got a lot of lings out on the field. Just a few drones slowly popping out here. What's the follow up from Kid? I think you just die. Yeah, I don't think there's any follow-up here. Let me speed this up a little bit. We've got a lot of games today, guys. As usual with the China versus Korea League. Uh, there are just a crap ton of games to watch, so... Buckle in. We're just gonna zip through this one. Uh, probably watch Kid die. If he makes a comeback, I would be just shocked, but... I don't think that's likely. The third base finishes at seven minutes, right as the Corsair is coming out on the field. We're gonna make a Spore to defend some of these Overlords, which is nice. Yeah, great, Spore. But the drone count is still dismal and the Zealot count is very high. As long as he gets plus one and Zealot speed, he should be able to walk out and kill. An Archon or some DTs on the map would be insanely powerful as well. Even though we have this one spore here, we don't have a spore over here, and you can't slowly drift your overlords over here with a Corsair harassing and no overlord speed on the way. So this is looking dire for a kid. The two times speed gonna boost us ahead in this game. All that Stone needs to do is rack up those gateways. Pump out some of these DTs and Zealots and just go for the kill. It's going to move out now with that big group of Zealots. How many do we have here? Nine Zealots. I don't see any sunken colonies. There's one popping right now, but there's really not much here to defend. Just a small group of Hydralists to try and keep himself alive. I mean, Kid is doing a reasonable job despite being in such a bad position. But we've still got just sunken spore at each base quite a few hydras but he's behind in the upgrades he's waiting for his range upgrade to finish stone just now getting all of his gateways online he's going up to of course that eight gateway count start to pump out more and more units even going into a third base so he's allowing this to go a lot longer than i thought he would uh, just because he doesn't want to take a risk and dive in and you know have the the potential of falling behind now if he takes this engagement i'm gonna slow it down once again um looks like the hydras are gonna probably find this out on the map that's so many zealots templar are coming up as well this is important if this templar makes it to the front i don't see how we can have kid win this game he's gonna send some zealots over trying to break through this area there should be a big storm the Zealot's going to open up a space for the Zealots to get in, but he actually backs away. He gets both storms off, but they're not the greatest storms I've ever seen. Good job dodging there by Kid. He knew that there was only the two, and once those have been dodged, he can start to switch it up. Now, 12 drones on the way and a Spire about to finish. 
This is interesting. He's going to suddenly jump up to almost 40 drones. And with that increased production, the Spire here coming online, maybe he can pull something out. Maybe he can do something. I mean, he needs three on gas for sure. He's getting his third gas. So he definitely wants more gas. That's a mistake. You should really have three on gas here. Um, he's not going to have the gas that he needs uh, to potentially switch into Mutalis here. And that's unfortunate. He does pick off the DT, however. DT is dead. That gives him options to start trying to take bases down here in the bottom right. It's a little bit hard to do that if you still have a DT running around being annoying. So after picking that off, we could see a drone be sent out. Still on five hatch, just now adding the sixth. Six mutas on the way. This is the gambit here. Stone has allowed this to occur. He could have put on a lot of pressure to kid a bit earlier and made this game really tough for him. Um, but didn't want to risk losing his good position. He just wanted to play this out uh, from a really strong spot. And now there is a opportunity. I'm not saying that it's a good opportunity. I'm not saying that it's likely going to happen. But with these mutas, maybe kid can put something together maybe he can get over here snipe a bunch of templar and open up a position that can be punished stone just keeping track of where these hydras are going he's got his fourth base on the way that cannot be allowed to stand we don't even have our own fourth base on the way as a zerg player right now so he's got to make something happen here no two ways about it it's just about time to spring this trap or to spring this, uh, I guess this strategy. Three more mutas about to pop. He's going to go all the way to 11. 11 mutas here. He knows that there's no Corsair. He'd seen the entire army and he doesn't see a Dark Archon either. So we're about to hit the pinnacle of this game, the peak moment here where Kid is going to try and snipe every single Templar. Let's see if he can make it happen and bring this back for the Chinese. Move forward now. He's ready. He sees where the army's at. He's moving forward. Is he going to pull the trigger? He's waited a long time for this moment for the Protoss to get this far extended out on the map to where after the Templar is sniped, maybe he can kill every single uh, Dragoon surround the army and finish it off. Here we go. Diving in. One, two, three. Okay. Three go down in quick succession. There are still two remaining. This one on very low HP. Can he get in here and finish this off? One big storm on this big group of Hydras. He's controlling the Mutas right now and failing to control his Hydralisk army. All of his Mutas have fallen and his Hydralisk counterattack is not working well right now. We've got two more storms available in this army group let's see how they land storm on the left hand side dealing a huge amount of damage look at the hydras just melting however the hydras on the right hand side still holding their ground fighting back against the dragoons pretty seriously i think that had those last two templars been sniped we might have seen kind of a stalemate here and the ground being held by kid but unfortunately, it did not go to plan. The Mutas left one Templar on like 3 HP and another Templar still alive with multiple storms available. So that does not end up working out. I'm not surprised at all considering how badly the early game went. Zerg is one of the hardest races, I think, to make a comeback with when it comes to, you know, early aggression. If you make a mistake like going for a huge amount of early pressure with a bunch of lings, the way that Kid did, it's so tough to turn that into a macro game because the entire time you were doing that, the Protoss player was just making probes, right? You're not making any drones. They're just making probes. So you're so far behind in the economic curve of the game and Kid not able to overcome that. A 2-0 lead right now for Korea. Let's see if China can bring it back. So as we head on into game number three, Shao Shuai going to take the field. 
top left hand corner his opponent is going to be blade blade awesome movie great name by the way i like it i know it's dick cacao cacao talk is a very famous uh application in korea a lot of people use it um so maybe that's where the the name comes from i have no idea but he is named blade according to liquipedia doesn't have a lot of information about him and that's exactly what i was talking about earlier right these are not the absolute pinnacle of korean pro players but they are strong pro players like these guys are no joke and Shao Shui himself, like, Shao Shui is insanely strong. These guys are getting to a very high level on the ladder, but they're having a struggle in tournament play, of course. And this tournament is meant to pit them against players that will test their skills, but not like they're going up against, for example, Snow or something like that. You know, we're not going to see Royal in this series, I don't think or other, you know, soul key, other uh, ASL champions. Not until the Korean pros start to dominate uh, the lower tier pros in Korea. Then we'll see, I think, more interest in the Korea versus China uh, tournament and also uh, more interest from those strong players. You know, the, the uh, player pool will have to grow and evolve as time goes on assuming that chinese pros continue to get stronger and i think they will i have a good feeling about that what okay i actually got confused for a second i thought this was the other side of the map i thought that zerg was down here as i was trying to pontificate and talk there i was like whoa is this a proxy but no this is actually on his side of the map this is just the third base because the natural is being blocked. Got a little confused there, guys. Sorry about that. We have a photon cannon here at the front. Gateway soon to follow. Not getting too over eager here. Blade being nice and careful. Even though he can see there's only two lings on the map. Making sure he's got the full wall. And the cannon ready to defend. We're finally going to find our Protoss opponent now with this first Ling, Shao Shui. A little bit unlucky with the scouting. Lucky, though, that he put this base here. Or maybe he came over here with the Overlord before he put this down. Because if you put this base here and your Protoss opponent is right there, my goodness, is it quick to send a Zealot to that third base. It can be a real problem. Uh, it could be strong if you're gonna like ling all in or something like that but i don't think we want to do that this game after what happened in the last one oh yeah guys i just went and watched um deadpool versus wolverine a lot of great cameos in that movie blade being one of them i haven't seen blade for so long man i really hope he does make a comeback uh either as the same person same uh actor or maybe a different one i'm not i'm not mad about either of those that would be um that would be awesome to see a, a, like a new revamped blade as long as they don't mess it up too bad i don't see what reason that they would have to mess it up it's not like they can dei it They should be able to just have a black superhero, right? Like one of the ones that's actually black. That would be cool. He needs to make a comeback. We've got a few lings out here. Zelda's going to head on back home. He doesn't want to get too carried away over eager for some of that Zerg blood. He's just going to sit back at home, wait for his brother in to join him. And for plus one to finish up. Shao Shui, on the other hand, just pumping out drones like crazy. He will have his spire seemingly on time here. 
Uh, definitely considering there is no Stargate this game. Just going to be a really quick plus one attack with a lot of zealots. He's got two gateways so far. Is he going to go up to four? I wonder. We're going to see four gates. Sometimes they'll put two gates here because it's harder to spot when you're flying in with the overlord, but there's no overlord coming in. This is I'm surprised about. I'm really surprised he wants to move out with four zealots right now. I cannot fathom why he wants to do this because the timing is so crisp, right? We want to come out when the plus one and the speed is done. That's when we'll be the most powerful. What is this air weapons on the way? Oh, he's going to build a Stargate now. That's so weird. What is going on? Well, this is um, quite a confusing game, actually. I'm really not sure. Like, it feels like we're going in multiple different directions right now when it comes to Blade and his choices in this game. Ooh, gets a drone. Not bad. Some more Zealots going to be sent out. He's trying to just make some problems for his Zerg opponent. Hydras are here to start to pick off these Zealots. Zealots are going to engage finally. Lings will clear that. The zealot in the main could get a lot of damage. That's already a drone in the main. A drone in the natural. Two drones in the main. Pretty painful stuff. Cannot get a second drone with this zealot, but I think he's done enough damage already to for sure make this worthwhile. I don't know how many drones are killed here, but we're down to just 21 workers as Xiao Shuai. He is definitely having a hard time contending with this zealot runaround play. Uh, as many Zerg players would, I included. It was very difficult to handle a Protoss player in the early game just throwing Zealots into your bases randomly and setting them to work on the drone lines. It's um, it's not easy, that's for sure. We have the Spire. We're just going into Hydralis, though. Mass Hydra for now. Scourge flying into the main, just barely missing that first Corsair. Corsair's heading across the map right now, but Scourge should be available to kill that. Hydras are back at home as well. He's going to get a scout of the main, but I'm really not clear as to why this Corsair was made or why we started making Corsairs now at such a late timing. Looks like he could get this Corsair. It's going to pop out in just a second. Can he actually get that? The cannon's not done yet. This could be a big kill. Will he get it? Oh my God. What is that? Course, they're just getting away scot free. How did that even happen? Scourge there, completely ignorant, no brain. Uh, Scourge just total fail from those Scourge. Absolutely, such a pain in the butt to try and micro those. You can see why right there. Two, four cannons actually here at the natural, so you won't be able to ling run by. But Shao Shui is getting big. He's Adding on a lot of drones right now because he knows he can handle the zealot number that's out on the field. He killed enough earlier on and he has a good enough army now that he can pump out 14 drones at the same time. It's kind of an insane uh, production strategy, just all drones. But this is the way you have to play as Zerg. You have to s be confident switching back and forth between drone production and unit production. And Xiao Shui doing a good job of that so far. He's got Hydras over here in the top right as well. I'm not sure what those are there for, but... Does have information that that area is clear. Could send a drone up into the top right pretty soon. Just a bit of a um, treaty there between the Hydras and the Zealots. You know, free pass. That, he, that Zealot got a free pass across the map. These Hydras are going to uh, respect it. Respect the Hall Pass, boys. There's four zealots over here now, still being a nuisance, still running around. Shao Shui does need to find those eventually, otherwise they could just run in. Start to kill drones in his main. Is that drone not mining? Okay, it is. Okay. Occasionally, there are times when drones just don't mine, and a Zerg player will forget one of them in their mineral line. I've spotted that a few times, and it really is a pain. But now at 45 drones, he no longer needs to produce drones for quite some time, at least until he gets a third base, so... 
just full unit production and it's gonna be mass muta look at that huge amount of mutas popping out right now and he's gonna see this with the scourge templar are hitting the field this is the moment now for Shao Shuai. He set up this trap. As the Templar move across, I'm really shocked that he's not just keeping the, the Scourge on this, but he's gonna find these three Templar and he's gonna wipe them out. Here we go. Templar getting picked off. They try to cast their storms. They do a pretty good job of dealing that damage. You can see all of these are very low, but three Templar get picked. Now he can come across the map and actually kill this base, potentially. I believe that Shao Shui knows about this. Will he bring his full mass of Hydras across to deal with it, though? It seems like he's more interested in maybe taking a fourth. I'm not so sure. But that's what it looks like. Corsair's coming out. There's just three of them, but they could actually massacre these Mutas. If not for the Scourge that are available right now. Can he stop the Nexus? Coming forward, trying to get the pickoffs on these Corsairs. Corsairs going to dodge that. But the Nexus is forced to be cancelled. A big move here for Shao Shuai. Preventing this base. Giving himself a good lead now. Of course, still a overall unit lead right now for our Protoss player. But he's lost a bunch of Templars. He's only got three, four in this army. And not too many storms available. Those three Templar that were building storms the entire game got no value aside from just damaging these mutas. So that is very painful for our Protoss player right now. And he's going to make a ton of Lurkers. Zerg adding on ex extra hatcheries. He's gone up to... That's six hatch hydro production. Interesting to keep two hatcheries here in the natural. And only two or three hatcheries in the natural, two in the third. But I really like the Sim City here overall from Shao Shui. It's looking very powerful and difficult to break. Third base is going to try to come up over in this location now. Can he hold on, to, hold on to that position? Because it doesn't seem like Shao Shui is interested in taking a fourth base right away. Instead, he is going to go full-on battle Zerg. Try to break this, I think. 11 mutas in the stack. There are quite a good number of Dragoons. But no Templar to be seen at the front. What happened to all the Templar, actually? Oh, there's one under there. There's one under there, and one there, and one there. Is he doing that int intentionally? I feel like he might be doing that intentionally. Okay, one Templar goes down. All of the Mutas just vaporize. Wow. I think that was actually intentional. Here comes Shao Shui now. Running forward. I've never seen that before. Hiding Templar underneath of those Corsairs actually seemed to work out pretty well. Ooh, the Zealots are gonna engage and there's so many Lurkers in this army. The Lurkers just eating these Zealots alive. Hydras are going to uh, start to disperse. More Hydras are coming, though. Joshua, very serious about this attack. He wants to end the game right here, right now. Are there any more Templar coming out? I don't see any. And just pure Hydra versus Dragoon will eventually go to the Hydras. We've got plus two upgrade, plus one, one for our Protoss player. Dragoons are falling en masse. Not too many left over, and the Hydras are still spilling forward. He does back away as this Hydra number gets a little bit too low to continue to fight. More Templar are starting to pop out. And that went very badly for Shao Shui, and the lack of fourth base is going to hurt him a lot in this game. Really unlikely that he'll be able to break our Protoss player from this position. He'll have to defend a, th a fourth base and eventually either stop the fourth of his Protoss opponent or try to get into a huge macro game. I think a huge macro game is probably the best chance of a victory here for Shao Shui. 
because he threw away a massive army and really wasn't able to get a whole lot out of it aside from killing the Templar and a pretty decent sized force of Dragoons. Zealots as well, but you're fine with that as the Protoss as long as you keep this third base alive and the Zerg has yet to take a fourth. Once you're even on bases, you will eventually win in the long grand scheme of things, especially with the Zerg not going in a hive. He's just making uh, lair units sticking on a battle Zerg trying to fight this army is killing off quite a few of the dragoons this is going not too bad for Shao Shui as he pushes forward with some more lurkers there's not a lot of zealots in this army and the Templar are starting to fall at the back of the fight yeah all the Templar are going to go down I don't see an observer with this there is one in the background here but the hydras are going to continue to push forward the Templar are going to get picked off dragoons are falling more hydras coming forward there's the observer now finally coming up he will be able to clear this but the army has been reduced significantly once again and we should have okay we don't have any drones at the fourth still so despite throwing down this fourth he just hasn't saturated that it's time to just send a few drones from each base over to this location just get at least one drone per patch at that fourth so that we can maximize the value of our workers but Xiao Shui not able to do that in this game it seems and he's really gonna pay for it he's trying to just battle Zerg again he's gonna try and break in here I mean the Protoss army is not looking that strong with only one Templar available pure Hydra Lurker can do a lot but DT coming out Overlord speed is still not there wow still no overlord speed that is kind of wild that's kind of nuts corsair flying around here at the back thought that might be some sort of drop but it's not he's setting up for what looks like a containment but what is the point of containing when you're on even bases even bases is not going to give you an advantage and zealots are going to slip out this left hand side a big oversight here for xiao shui he may end up losing this hatchery these zealots will kill that very quickly plus one attack is all they have but with five zealots hitting this you'd be surprised how quickly this dies and how slowly the zealots actually get picked off there it is he's actually going to kill it and with the death of that fourth base the longevity of Shao Shui in this game is non-existent another great storm there on the right hand side Shao Shui going to pull back once again I mean, he's not making any progress and he's not expanding. He's not growing. Uh, two things that are d will directly lead to your downfall in this game. Brood War is not forgiving at all. And Shao Shui is not going to be finding any forgiveness. Maybe with um, JW4040. Maybe he can find forgiveness there, but for now... You know, Blade is not one to forgive. His father was a vampire. His mother was a human. He's a little bit of both. He's going to be sending in Zealots to this natural. That's not really going to do too well. Maybe if they actually get up in the main, they can do a little damage. Meanwhile, big attack here at the front. Joshua going to get in here and do actually a very decent job clearing this. The problem is the storms are going to get great value. And there are cannons at both of these locations. Maybe he can break through the natural. Let's see. Looks like everything got cleaned up over there. Main base has been cleared out. Cleared out. Joshua just going to try and shove in. Can he actually break through this? I mean, he's running out of momentum right now. And his... Lurkers are going to get picked off. Great storm there from the high ground. Everything getting forced back once again. He's lowered this. Like, he's done better here than I actually expected. A lot better than I expected. Shao Shui, I thought he was just going to fizzle out of this game. But he's managed to hang in there and make it kind of close. Going to come in and kill this forge. Making a bunch of damaged Hydras into Lurkers right now. 
I mean, I think what you can do as Shashwai here is set up a big lurker contain and then kill this base with Hydras because there's no Templar over here. He'll force the army of Blade to walk through the lurker spines in order to engage this. And maybe that's the moment. Well, Blade's going to react really quickly, start to punch through these uh, lurkers immediately. What if you of the dragons actually going down and the probes are dying he's breaking through can he actually do it right now there's not a lot left we needed storms over here by the third base but they just were not available he's gonna take this fight right now with the hydras a couple of templar do get picked off but one makes its way into an archon makes itself into an archon excuse me and that's it i think xiao shui wins that is wild Josh, so I actually going to take this game. There's no mining left for our Protoss player. I mean, we were on even bases for a very long time. He's not mined a lot of this. Kind of shocking that Shao Shui is going to win this. He has a full 20 supply ahead. He's picking off the last couple of units of Blade. Blade is going to go down in a blaze of glory with this final army. Shao Shui backing away now. Long distance mining over here at the third base. Zealot over at the top right. Pretty annoying at the moment. That's a full HP Zealot. And it's going to have a lot of kills here in a moment. Plus two, plus two is done. So the just plus two of these Hydras. Not uh, not doing so well for, uh, for Shao Shui. Um... Gonna get another fight over here. Picking off that Zealot. Good splitting once again. Killing off the last of the Dragoons. And there it is. He leaves the game. Ooh, Shao Shui takes this one down. That was a shocking conclusion, honestly. Just now he got his fourth base operational. And there was long distance mining coming here. Oh, I guess this Hydros came to block that. That is crazy. Really wild performance there from Shao Shui. I don't know if I missed anything in this game. I feel like I mostly got the gist of it, but I don't know how Shao Shui was able to beat the Protoss here with just three bases. It's kind of wild. Give me a new respect for this man. Shao Shui, I know he's good, but he just put a point on the board for the Chinese squad that I did not think was going to come out here. Look at all the blue goo on the screen. A great way to end as we jump into game number four. Okay, hot off a win here for China. We've got Messiah in the top left-hand corner. Prime down in the bottom right. Prime, a really skillful opponent. Very strong Korean uh, StarCraft Brood War player. Not surprised to see Xiao Shui win that last one. He's like one of those very few players who lives outside of South Korea that can actually take games off of the strongest South Korean players. Like he almost made it into the ASL. I think this last season it was in the final round, I believe he's really, really good. So he'll be probably carrying this lineup. I know John or Shao Gu Gu is very strong. Juan Hoon's really good too. Um, I might be missing a couple of their kid obviously seems like a good player as well. Although that, uh, matchup, uh, his first matchup here didn't go so good. Like he was controlling uh, a lot of lings trying to do the all in. It's tough. I mean, it makes sense. Sometimes that doesn't go according to plan, but hopefully we'll get another great game out of him. Or a few more great games out of him here in the future. Now we've got this guy who I've never casted before. Messiah, the chosen one. This guy here, another Zerg player going up against Prime. We are going to get some ZVT. That's awesome. Like to see some ZVT as well. Glad it's not all Protoss players on the Korean squad. And <clears throat> oh my gosh, excuse me. Just choking a little bit here. Oh, 
Oh, all right, I'm back. Gas for Prime. We're gonna see on Dark Origin some sort of 111 build, I suppose. Is he gonna put the factory here? Is that actually gonna wall him in? I feel like there's a space there. Maybe with a supply depot? You can close that off? I'm not sure. I'm not uh, totally well versed in these uh, factory wall offs. Like I know about the supply depot barracks wall offs, obviously, but when you mix a factory in there or a refinery or whatnot, <clears throat> it gets a little complicated. I had, for example, I had no idea until like two casts ago that a supply depot on the left of a refinery was a hole that Marines can walk through, but Zealots can't. Yeah, that was a total, that was total news to me. Had no idea. So uh, thanks to whoever commented that. It's a never ending learning journey. Whoa, 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 what? Oh my goodness. It's a never ending learning journey. Casting Brood War and being a fan of Brood War. Cancelled his lair, Messiah, and builds a Hydro Den. I think we might see an all in. I think we may see an all in. And I like it. I'm a fan. Saving some larva right now, building that sunken out in front. He will be able to stop the first vulture. Can he stop this SCV from getting in and scouting him, though? Looks like he will. And it's just pure hydroless production from this. He's placed the sunken colony out far, far enough so that you can't see the larva or what's popping out of them. Uh, it's going to be completely in the dark here. Going around the back. Ooh. This might actually reveal the entire strategy. If he can get this over right away, he, he's going to see it. Messiah is going to see this. Can he get this over? He will. Prime. Excellently done. Gonna come to the back right now. Double port wraith. Two port wraith. Gonna be the follow up here. Pulling back the lings just a little bit, but the hydra on the ramp should be able to deal with this no problem. We've got the first wraith out, but hydras are already heading across the map. There's no bunker here. Another marine gonna be produced, but this is just an all in. We're going, we're going for it right now. Gonna try and get the kill. Kills that SCV. Coming up the ramp. I think this is a Messiah win. We should see Messiah take this game. Um, the Overlord is going to die. There's a bunker on the way. But he's just going to go after this uh, Supply Depot immediately. Supply Depot going to fall. No two ways about it. He can delay it as much as he wants. But eventually that's going to go down. Wraith here. Pretty annoying. That goes down. Uh, the the uh, vulture goes down. Got two marines in a bunker. That is it. A lot of SCV is going to be brought forward. He can just start to kill these buildings, though. The buildings are going to start to go down. There's not really a whole lot of damage he can do on the other side. He could maybe fight and kill this hydralisk. Yeah, I think he will actually just kill the hydra. But he's almost going to lose that. Almost going to lose one of these uh, wraiths. They do die so quickly. Four more... Uh, hydras are on the way. There's now two bunkers, but there's only four marines between the two bunkers. There's not a good situation. Here we go. He's going to dive on top. Can he actually kill the bunker before he gets repaired? That's a pretty good repair, but I think that's a little bit too much damage. He does kill that, but jumping right into the second bunker. A really good move here by Prime, keeping himself alive, getting the surround on these hydras. And back over here, how many kills are on these? Five kills on that wraith. And he will be able to clear all the hydras. Uh, back at home. Can he even continue the Hydralis production right now? I don't think he's got Overlord. So the Overlords are out here. And Hydras are going to start to be picked off by the Wraiths. Six kill Wraith. Pretty strong. Finally does go down. He should be able to walk around this, right? He's going to walk around it. Just three Hydras. So not the scariest force in the world. He kills the other Wraith. Um, just about in range of that bunker. It's so close, but it's actually not in range. Oh, it's actually empty. Wait, what? A, wait a second. The barracks died, and there's nothing in the bunker. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. 
Um, it's just pure SCV versus pure Hydra. That's all he's making right now. This is a crazy game. Getting right on top of this, actually killing some of the Hydras with these last few SCVs, but I think he's just about run out of time in this game. GG, Prime taps out. Messiah ties up the series two to two. A wild game here from Messiah, but a very nice idea, right? You get scouted with the lair, then just cancel and build a Hydralist den and go all in. It's a very good counter to Wraith play. So he wants to get in there, deal a bunch of damage. You could, of course, go for Burrow and just Burrow all your drones and then wait for the Spire to finish, but that's still going to slow you down quite a bit. This is like, I want to kill you right now. And if they don't respond absolutely perfect, you can totally just n nuke them and unfortunately he pulled the marines out of this bunker i guess i didn't actually see when that got pulled out let me go back a little bit when did he lose those marines i guess right there like two seconds before this point when i paused so they got inside this bunker and then he pulled the marines out and decided to fight here which was definitely a mistake even though he cleared the scvs he lost the marines and if he just had the Marines in the bunker, maybe he could have built a add-on and popped out a tank. And once you get the tank out, then it makes this Hydralist play so much weaker. So unfortunate stuff there for Prime. Masai going to take another victory. Again, all tied up as we jump into game number five. Okay, the roulette wheel has spoken. Once again, it's going to be Xiao Shui versus... Should I call this? Dick WhatsApp. It's not WhatsApp, but what is it? It's uh, Blade, his true name. We are recording. Okay. Sometimes I forget to press the record button. Just checked it. We're all good to go. We're jumping into this game now. At a turning point in this series. Who's going to take the lead? I'm just trying to think of what could blade have done better in that series or in that game a little bit earlier like he handled everything really well the transition from Shao Shui into mutas did almost nothing if you remember it was a very cool move by blade to hide his templar underneath the corsairs and they basically got ravaged for one what was it 12 11 mutas for one templar and from that point, I really thought that Xiao Shui was in a lot of trouble. Well, he he definitely seemed to be in a lot of trouble, but he was able to somehow maneuver himself into a better spot than I was expecting. Now, we've got a Nexus first this time. Wanting to take a big advantage early on. This is an overpool that we've just seen out of Xiao Shui. So, you know, he's going to have Lings out on the map, but the... Photon Cannon starts and he only made two links, so he should be okay. May need to block with some probes, but I think he'll he'll be fine here. It's a pretty long rush distance on Apocalypse. Links making their way to the front. Three probes gonna block the entrance. And will he be able to get by here? Targeting down one probe. He pulls away the injured probe. Very nicely done. Once again, pulling it back. Cannon finishes. Lynx will get in. A little bit rough. A little bit rough here. For Blade. He's, um... Gonna be bothered quite a bit by this. Shao Shui. Gonna be keeping these Lynx alive in the main for a long time. Absolute top class Zerg player is Shao Shui. He's super scary. Um... Like I said, one of the only players you could expect from China to make th his way into the ASL. Almost managed to do it this last season. It was so close. We we're so close to having a foreigner in the ASL, but... Now that the name has been changed to Soup, it's the, the Soup Star League. The very first one ever. I guess we're never going to see a foreigner in the ASL. Not in the group stages, anyway. Maybe in the qualifier, but not in the group stages. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate stuff. 
Oh, but it is what it is. Maybe soup uh, will give us some better luck. We'll end up seeing a foreigner in that league. Uh, maybe we'll have uh, with the new PSL, the Premier Star League that's coming out. Maybe we'll have a foreigner in that. That would be awesome. That would be super hype. Zealot going behind the mineral patches here. Just going to be annoying. It is what it is. One by one, the lings come in. Gonna kill like two, maybe three lings here. Almost gets that third ling. These two are still alive in the main base. Let's take a look at their kills. Any kills here? No. Driving the probes off the mining just a little bit now and then. Forcing one zealot to chase them. They've been quite the hindrance here to our Protoss player, but you know, they haven't actually gotten many kills as of yet and almost get one of the links gets picked off just that now. So even with speed, not able to do too much. We've got plus one attack for our Corsairs on the way. Going up to a fourth hatch now with the Spire coming down as well. First Corsair is going to be out in a moment. Spire's more than halfway complete. He should be okay. Probably not going to lose any overlords. You know, he doesn't have overlords here, here, or here. They've all been sent out on the map so that they are not easy to find. So that Scourge will be able to find those Corsairs before Corsairs can find and kill the overlords. Good move so far by Xiao Shui. He's looking very good in this game. I don't know how... Uh, Blade can hope to beat Xiao Shui when he couldn't even uh, finish the game uh, against him in that first one, that, that opening match between these two. Uh, when you've already taken some economic damage and been slowed down, I mean, I feel like Xiao Shui is just going to run over you. I'm sure that um, Blade may be feeling the same way. Some Scourge are going to come out here in a moment. Oh, there they are. Just barely gets the Overlord kill and may be able to get out. Although these uh, Scourge are actually on a collision course. Oh, well, this, this Corsair over here, kind of funny. Just flying right in. Is that going to die? Yeah, it will. And it's not paying attention to that, unfortunate. Lings finally do go down, though. That's important, sort of. Another Corsair goes down. I'm guilty of this as well. Letting my Scourge chase for too long. Just forgetting about them. Letting them die to the cannon in the natural. It is what it is. He's back at home, macroing like a beast. Getting his Hydralis dead out. Sunken Colony's coming as well. That leads me to believe that he may be wanting to uh, do a little bit of uh, Muta play. Especially with this uh, Carapace coming. We may see a, a flood of Mutas here in a moment. There we are. Instantly, three mutas get made right as I say it. 42 drones are available. What's this uh, little zealot move out going to do? We're right before plus one and speed. And that's why it might actually deal some damage because we've timed it out. So our defenses will be ready in time for the plus one and speed, which is typically when you would be attacking. And yeah, he's not going to attack until that's done. Mutas are going to be out by that time. And these zealots will be denied. Here they come. Heading over towards the natural. There's no lings in the gap uh, to block that. And it looks like Xiao Shui hasn't rallied all of his hatches just yet. Should be doing that shortly. Bringing all the mutas together. Try and pick off these zealots as quickly as he can. Get as much damage out here as possible. Focused right now on the macro side of things. Seven. What? Seven overlords at the same time? Well, that's got to be a mistake. Pretty big supply block here for Xiao Shui right now. You can see he's not perfect. Nobody is, but his macro did slip for a moment there. He will pay for that now. Finally going to be able to re-drone or start to drone up a little bit further. 47 is pretty darn good he's gonna go right to 50 which is almost too much even on six hatchery you might actually need a seventh hatchery to be able to produce on 50 drones like one more hatch in the main wouldn't be a bad idea oh my goodness so many overlords we finally will have overlord speed coming up 
pile on here at the front trying to think about taking a third base we've got seven corsairs and an archon to deal with this mutilus play we'll go ahead and pick off that probe drone sent over to the fourth base is gonna be picked off i think i might get that oh it's so close is he actually gonna finish it or not seems like he won't be able to and the lings and sunken colony are gonna push that back scourge unmass with that plus one plus one armor is a big deal right now uh, if he takes the fight with the corsairs he may be able to wipe out the majority of them and that makes things really hard for blade if he wants to push forward uh, and keep his Templar alive. He's only got one Templar back at home right now. Does he have any, like, hidden somewhere? I don't think so. Going up to eight gates now. And looking to secure that third. A lot of Hydras coming out here for Shao Shuai. It really feels like he's going to stick to Battle Zerg style once again. Hydras coming up here to clear the Zealot. Fourth base on the way. Center left. Not the best location to take a fourth base and it may end up just getting punished immediately if zealots head in that direction he'd probably catch that probe gonna try to throw down a nexus in a moment but mutus could swoop in here and finish this off just before the nexus goes down and he will that is great just slowing down this base is really really uh impactful oh scourge are just gonna absolutely disintegrate and he will have to split the mutas. The mutas have done a pretty reasonable job of slowing things down on the side of Blade, but we haven't gotten many kills. They haven't gotten like a lot of probes or killed some Templar or anything like that. They just kind of kept Shao Shui alive uh, during the initial part of this game. Spotting the base in the center left. Shao Shui going to react to that. He does need to get back up here on a high ground though for this fight takes place here we go he's gonna fight with the army storms could come down we've got some lurkers in the mix that's a lot of zealots the lurker even just one or two lurkers is gonna make it very hard for the zealot army to persist in this fight five mutas still left alive corsairs are gonna try and track them down nine corsairs now so much anti-air you've got to be really careful uh, if you lose a fight at this point and you start to lose a bunch of your hydras uh, that could happen where the uh, Corsair suddenly fly and kill every single Overlord now the base in the center right looks like it's about to go down Lurkers are coming up running right on top of this army You can throw down storms on the back of this and he's actually catching a lot of these hydras to the north side The lurkers aren't able to do that much damage and yeah this is kind of going bad for Shao Shui right now oh a run by into the main as well that's really frustrating hydras meanwhile are going to make their way over towards the third base building off a pylon there and starting to kill probes as well he's going to jump on top of these oh god oh no jumping on top of those dragoons but at the same time a lot of overlords are going to go down hydras making their way into the front though Lurkers gonna jump here into the natural Maybe set up right in front of this base and then you'll be able to kill every single probe Zealots making their way forward more overlords are going to die The natural is being breached right now on both sides Hydra lurker breaking its way in there. Oh that one storm was so deadly. Oh my goodness No storms over here though. And so he's gonna continue to deal damage the main base is being ravaged the uh, sunken colony is about to go down. He can't actually make anything. Shao Shui is losing his production capabilities. Does he have an overlord with this? There's some DTs popping out, and the DTs could ravage everything. Drones are actually fighting here. Archon with seven kills doing a huge amount of work. This Templar, I thought it would have more kills than that, but it doesn't. Oh, man. This DT is going to get a ton more damage. Pushing everything back. Hydras are going to come back home. The drones were actually evacuated, so maybe he can save his bases here. His natural is completely gone. And, oh my gosh, the drones are going to run right in here. If the Archon targets the drones, the Archon could target the stack. Oh my god. Oh. He's actually going to target. Oh, he targets. Beautiful target there. 
Killing off so many drones in this fight. 15 kills. Why is this Archon not attacking? It's on like a move command or something. Kills the hatchery in the end. DT here ravaging these units. You actually should target your own unit. Target one of your own lings or something and just kill the DT with the spines. But main base is gone. DTs on mass. I don't think that Zhao Shui can win anymore. He's got no Hydras. Literally no anti-air. He can't even build a Hydra right now. He's got an evolution chamber and a spawning pool. He's going across. He's got one overlord. He's got one overlord. Oh my God. Well, that one overlord is everything in this game right now. But I tell you that overlord will die eventually. Oh, there's another one. There's two more. There's two more overlords. Oh, can he kill all the DTs? The DTs are going down, but the lurkers are falling faster. And the last lurker goes down. What a wild game. Really fun, fun matchup. Shao Shui versus Blade. This is a cool, cool ZVP match. And um, I'm looking forward to the next one. I wonder if we get another one this series. We're going to go back to the roulette wheel and figure out uh, who's going to come out next. Which match will be repeated. But there is now a lead on the board for the Korean squad. They're at 3-2. to two, So only one more win is necessary. And they will take this best of seven series. Whew. A little bit worn out after that cast, guys. That was so much action all at the same time. I'm not going to picture in picture because this this uh, series is already insanely long. It's going to take me a ton of time to put together. In, in, unless something really crazy happens that I miss, I probably won't picture in picture anything in this series. But we're going to jump into our next game, guys. Hold your breath or don't hold your breath or you'll probably die. We're jumping in. Awesome. We're going to watch another kid game. Kid versus Stone should be a fun match. I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't get a better match between these two a little bit earlier. Um, but I'm really glad that we're going to get the rematch here. Stone down in the bottom right. Is he going to go for Forge Expand again? No, Gateway Expand again. Excuse me. He went Gateway Expand last time and the Ling Rush didn't finish him off. So um, another... What is this? Overpool? Another overpool here. And Kid just gonna play a normal game, hopefully. I really do like this player, this Chinese player. Because I feel like he has some interesting builds, some interesting timings, and he really seems creative with the way that he plays Zerg. Creative Zerg players are the best to watch. Think Larva. Think Shine. Like, Soul Key is amazing to watch, don't get me wrong. A fantastic player. And his games can be really interesting. He's like a, just a macro god. But creative Zerg players are really a spectacle for the fans and one HP pro but manages to survive that's that's unfair that's got to be that's got to be patched I don't know how the hell that thing survived kid was fighting that so well on the ramp he was getting so many more shots than the probe was getting and now the probe's gonna block him again no third base does go down zealots are back at home gas on the way The Lings will start to harass. Zealot plus probe on the ramp. We've seen this before, this dance. Let's see if Kid King once again get the two Lings up in the main. He's playing a very nice little game of cat and mouse here. Running by, he does manage to get in with one Ling. These other two Lings just going to look for an opportunity to slip in there once again. Not able to find it just yet. Is he gonna get a probe kill? He gets one. He gets one probe. One probe for the one Ling. And another Ling dies out here, it looks like. No, no, sorry. There was just two Lings here. So, managing to get one probe. Not bad. Not bad at all. Gets a full scout of the main. Not like he was um, already in here with the Overlord at all. Um, <clears throat> Ling's going to try this again. Can he actually get that probe kill? One Zealot heading across the map. Looks like it's going to turn around, though. 
recognizing that there's probably going to be some links coming. Link speed is on the way. And an overlord is uh, going to pop out in a moment. Two more drones, though. So unlikely we're going to have an, a link all in, especially with the lair started. I think we're going to see a nice normal game out of kid just made a bare minimum number of links to actually deal with these zods that could be coming out now good pullback there keeping the links alive really important that you keep an eye on these zods where they're headed keep your links together three more sets of links are on the way and he did go for link speed before layer so it's a bit of a risk like you're gonna have your layer a lot later your spire is gonna be later therefore but Ling speed coming up right as the zealots are coming into your natural. That's a benefit. That's a big benefit of going for this play. He's going to get the surround on the ramp. Can you take a good fight here? He kills the probe first and waits for a couple more links. This is actual perfection from Kid. Absolute perfection from him. He's going to clear this. And then some. He's going to get this other zealot too. Oh, and he catches it in the corner. That's so good. Yeah, well, does get a few extra kills there, but not the biggest deal. Only two extra sets of links were made. Just in case these are like backup links, just in case there's another zealot coming in. Um, the zealots are back at home though right now. And he will be able to drone heavily from here. Kid is in a pretty good spot. It's not like a, a winning position, but he is going to be feeling nice, cozy, comfortable, and... Our Protoss player Stone is blind on the map for now. He cannot send out anything. Ling's speed will run that down. And he just doesn't have zealous, zealots in high enough numbers to push out in force. So he's going to have to stay home. Wait for his course there to pop out. Before he can get any information. And that's just not a comfortable position to be in as a Protoss player. Got our fourth hatchery on the way. A Hydralisk then is done. Is he actually going to pull the trigger on a Hydralisk attack? It doesn't really look like it. But then why would he have this Hydra Den done already? It's a little bit curious. Maybe he wants to go five hatch Hydra all in before nine minutes. That might be the case. I'm not going to call it here just yet. He's got a Scourge. There's the fifth hatch. Second gas. Two sets of Scourge. If he can block the Corsair from actually seeing anything, this becomes way stronger. There's a Scourge coming out. Let's see. Can he catch this? Oh, oh, oh. Almost got it. Try to run it down. Can he actually get on it? <gasps> what did that stop? That was so weird. It just stopped there. It will go down. And so he didn't see the third or the Hydralis Den, which is pretty big full on hydro production right now there's not a lot of zealots but they're moving out on the map the zealot legs is not done this could be a fake even if it does come in though hydras are going to be out in large number to wreck this army and then go across the map and try to break through the natural there's two cannons there now but here we go stone arrives in the natural he sees only lings and one Sunken is finishing. The Hydras are hiding. He's hiding the Hydras right now. He's going to try and clear this with pure Ling. Drone and Sunken. So that he doesn't know that the follow-up Hydra bust is coming. Uh, drones are starting to die. He has to pull the trigger now. He's going to come out. Start to kill off all of these Zealots. And back at home, mass cannon should be going down. He's also making a DT, which is huge. But Pneumatized Carapace is almost done. This actually what backfired pretty hard kid <laughs> I mean, he really wanted to clear that only with um with lings but i think it would have been a lot better if he would have come down surrounded with lings and then kill cleared with the hydras hiding the hydras for that long i mean it had a high chance or it had like a a, a good chance of if he was able to hide them maybe he could just get the kill straight up but since he wasn't able to hide them, like there's not a very good chance that he's actually able to hide them now. Overlord speed is done, but no overlords are in position, and this DT is going to be a menace. He needs to move an overlord. The longer that he waits to do that, 
the worst position he's going to be in. He's trying to get the Hydras to the front or trying to get the Overlords to the front here. But this is done. We've already got, you know, four cannons. Five and six are finishing. And Storm is moments away from completion. Now, the lack of Zealots is scary. And maybe he can still break in here, but I just, I'm not feeling this for Kit. He's making drones right now. He doesn't feel it either. I'm gonna come in, try to break through some of these cannons. Now he can kill the wall at least. Yeah, the wall will go down for sure. Now that this has been cleaned. Can he get the Corsairs as well? The Corsair kills are big. Kill the Corsairs, target the Corsairs. There we go. He does target them. He will kill the wall at least. Getting rid of one of the gateways. But I think we need to see like pure drone production because this is not going to be a killing blow. One DT heading around the outside of the map. Is that going to be caught? Drones resaturating the natural and the main. Quite a few drones were killed, mind you, uh, in the earlier battles. So, hmm. Looks like he won't kill the Cybernetic Core. That's, that's highly unfortunate. DT did go down though. Can he actually kill this gateway? I feel like with range, you easily kill that. 10 drones on the way. He's gonna quickly bump his way up to th almost 40 drones. I mean, 28 is low. He was very low in that count. He was really hoping to break through here. And again, we find ourselves in a position where the Protoss player is light years ahead. This is what happened with Kid earlier, is that he gambled on an attack that didn't really work out. Now, I feel like he's in a better position than in that that earlier game where he was, uh, you know, throwing away a huge amount of lings, but it's still not a great spot. Now, we've already got plus one, one, uh, two, one, one upgrades, and we just started one attack for these Hydras. That is what really hurts you with these type of Hydralist buses. You just don't have money to get the, the upgrades going as well. You can't do everything at once. And Zealots are going to come out, push these Hydralis away. They can probably fight from the ramp. Make an okay trade. And so the Zealots will back up. But with the Templar coming forward, this is a great way to break a ramp. You just bring one Templar. Yeah, you can't stand on that ramp anymore. Sorry. Maybe we'll start to push forward. One Hydra here. Decides to take a different path from his brethren. We'll quickly regret that. Three mutas are out, but that's it. Okay, five mutas are out now. He's gonna shove everything back. He knows that he killed all the Corsairs, so this is actually a very smart play. A good smart transition. Also consider the fact that he is getting Lurker right now. Right, and with Lurker coming in the, to play, um, Stone may overreact to the Mutalisk. Right, there's just five. That's one shotting these. Oh my god, the oops. That was quite the storm. Killing a bunch of his own probes. This is quite a lot of damage now. Down to just 43 probes. Wow, that did a lot. That was really, really good stuff from Kid. And the probe number is really not good anymore for Stone. Gonna get back to mining on this gas. He's only got two on that gas right now. That could actually end him in this game. Okay, he does put the third uh, probe on that gas, so that's very good. But lurkers are on the way. I don't actually see any right now, but lurker uh, upgrade is done. Oh my god, he doesn't have overlords to make lurkers. Oh, that's so painful. That is so painful. Finally gonna make a lurker. He finally starts a lurker here at the front. This happens to me all the time on the ladder, guys. Yeah, all the all the freaking time. You're like macroing, 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 doing things like diving in, killing off Templar, that type of crap. He's gonna get three Templar. Fourth Templar might actually go down. He forces out the storm at least. So he kills three Templar and forces the fourth to storm. So this is a really good trade with those uh mutas. They did Basically infinite damage in this game. It did so much damage. They killed so many probes and then come in and deal with the Templar as well. That is crazy good damage. I do not think Stone will be able to break through here. He can try. Um, 
with a plus two armor it makes it pretty rough to fight with hydras but without any storms hydras will win the day i'm gonna let them just come in a little closer a little bit closer a little closer now is the right time to dive in now we dive in with the hydras to start to pick off these dragons Ooh, one storm but that's it that's all the storm that's available and hydras are going to start to come from behind oh boy stone finds himself in a really difficult position here as hydras filling in from the backside and lurkers hydras pushing in from the front as well um okay i think stone can actually hold this but dragons are starting to die all right kind of an even trade there i mean quite a lot of dragons did fall but a lot of lurkers and hydras went down as well meanwhile base in the top left is going to start to get saturated kid shoving everything back once again he's holding this position he hasn't done what a lot of korean pros will do which is build sunkins out here in this position he's more so focused on just holding this with hydra and lurker Ooh, that one storm really wrecked his day and does he actually not have enough now oh my goodness he's gonna break through oh no stone is just gonna take this game kid falling too far behind after that failed bust and not taking the trades that he needed to he really hasn't defended anywhere like it's not like he built sunkens over here and not here and just didn't have enough to deal with this he killed all the templar and he just didn't have sunkens over in this position maybe the flank was too much i'm not sure but kid is forced out of this game and stone takes another one home for the korean squad giving them a four to two victory here over china in round number one now we're going to jump into round number two this is going to be a king of the hill matchup and i'll explain a little bit more as we jump into the next game round two fight we've got shao shui versus prime the king of the hill match whoever wins this will go up against another select player from the other squad so if shao shui wins another korean will come out to face him prime will be eliminated if prime wins shao shui will be eliminated and another chinese player will come out to face him the play continues until one side has four wins another best of seven here guys let's see how this one goes because the just because the korean squad managed to take away that first win that first part of the series doesn't mean that they can take this part as well it's a lot more difficult when you've got strong players like xiao shui in the lineup I just wanted to mention big shout out to our Korean partners or excuse me our Chinese partners uh, who have been so generous in sending over replays from their tournament I heard from them this week that the way the players are chosen is that four sponsors are selected for each week of the China Korea tournament and the sponsors get to choose which Chinese players they want to see play. So the Chinese players are chosen by the sponsors and then the Korean connection in South Korea chooses the uh, Korean players who will be sent out. So an interesting way of doing it. If you're interested in sponsoring uh, a Chinese player to join this tournament, if you've got a favorite, uh, or you just want to support brood war maybe there will be a future for you in this tournament maybe we can set something up i might sponsor uh one of these players myself i'd like to sponsor kid i think he's pretty cool at least to play in one of these um series so i'll keep on the lookout for that continue to work with them figure out what's best for brood war going forward for this series going forward i've actually just received recently oh wait a second oh this, this drone is so low Ooh, that drone really really low there but the scv has to bail out this drone as well incredibly low but it does manage to survive so shout out keeping all of his drones alive here in the early game really good stuff out of him um what was i gonna say We've got Marines heading across the map right now. 
and I'll think of it in a moment. Gonna put on that pressure. How many lings are popping? Only a couple of sets of lings are gonna pop out here. That should be enough to force the, the Marines back. And yeah, it will be. The, that Overlord spots the Marines. It is going to um, turn around though. And these Marines as well. Just gonna head on back to home. Yeah, naked Marines. You can't really fight if the lings outnumber the Marines at all. At this point in the game, if there's even if there's three on three, I think the Ling should be able to win that fight, especially with speed, which is what's about to happen. Six more sets of Lings here, Shao Shui. Going to put on a huge amount of pressure. That is a huge commitment. 12 Lings just popped as Ling speed finishes. He's going to go across the map. Let's see what kind of damage he can do because there's only one barracks and no bunker back at home. Prime is going to be caught with his pants down. Dude, he is going to be in so much trouble here. Xiao Shui comes forward. He sees the three lings, but he doesn't know the depth of the commitment here from Xiao Shui coming forward with the 12 lings. Going to jump right on top of this. Right inside the mineral line is Prime, but even with the defense of the uh, SCVs helping him out here, he's not going to be able to stop the lings from ravaging all of those Marines. And now going to work on this worker line, getting up into the main. Going to prevent the bunker from finishing as well. One fire bat pops out. It does kill two lings, which is big, but just pure rallies of lings coming across the map should be enough to end things. Plus with the spire finishing up, he will be able to take down Prime and gets himself the first win in the series. The king of the hill, Shao Shui, who will be sent out next. Okay, Shao Shui versus JW. Our messenger from God. Have you heard the good word? JW certainly has. He's 40 out of 40 conversions this week. Every door he's knocked, he's managed to sell a Bible. Now, I remembered what I was going to tell you guys about the Chinese league. Um, they recently sent me the rest, or not the rest of the series, but uh, the next like seven or eight weeks of the China Korean uh, tournament. So, I mean, that's great news. We're going to have from uh, 80 to 89 at least. So this will be going on for quite some time. Um, if we work something out, I guess. I don't know what's going to happen after that, but um, maybe they'll send me some more. Maybe we'll have to work at a deal. Who knows? But just to let you guys uh, in on what's going or what's what's happening in this end, um, we are set and good to go for at least another eight weeks, uh, which I'm, I'm all for. I'm totally into this. I love it. A lot of great games, a lot of good, scrappy, fun games in these series. And I, of course, want to see more foreign players uh, that are able to take games off of these Korean strong ladder players or pro players. I'm not sure if you even call these Korean pros. We don't even have a, a Liquipedia page for JW. For instance, I think Prime might have one. I'm not sure about that. I didn't check beforehand, but you know, they're not household names uh, as of yet anyway, but it is what it is. We're having like, it feels like they found a good level where the Koreans are still very strong, good players, but the Chinese really do have a good chance of taking home some wins. And so that's that's what we like to see is, you know, even if it's not the absolute best in the world, the best of the best, like ASL can't happen every day, right, guys? Or I guess it's the SSL now, the Soup Star League. Can't happen every day. So it's nice to uh, at least get some good quality Brood War uh, where the players are at, at the bare minimum at the same level. And you know that these guys are trying hard. Unlike maybe some of the uh, 
you know, ladder replays where the players aren't as involved. These guys are trying to make a name for themselves. You know, they're they're on the come up. Player like JW, he is trying his heart out in a series like this because he wants to improve. Same thing with Xiao Shui, right? This is where he gets to show his stuff. And they are, for the most part, from what I've seen, very evenly matched, the Korean squad and the Chinese squad. So that's what we like to see. Now, getting into this game, we've already got 2.5 hatch out of Xiao Shui. The classic plus one upgrade into three factory or three barracks, maybe four barracks. Gonna come from JW. Um, yeah, it looks like four racks will be the choice. It's kind of unlikely that it'll go to five racks. Although we have seen that. It's not unheard of, but it just, it's not very likely. Now he's only gonna make one comsat because he knows he's not up against a lurker play. He already scouted the entirety of the main. He saw the spire. He knows that that's not what he's facing up against, but he's just going to get one comsat. Just to, you know, maybe get a little view of what's going on. Xiao Shai's side of the map. He gets the scout here in the main. He will see the eggs morphing, and he knows that now is the perfect time to begin this turret production. He will start to cut some SCVs, I think, here in a moment, as he's reached that like 33 to 35 critical mark or amount where basically you have enough workers to pump out everything that you need as Terran right now. There's no real need to build workers and a lot of players, pillars like Light, have kind of pioneered this style where you stay on about 35 workers and you just put an immense amount of pressure onto the Zerg player. Now, we'll see if he decides to go with that. Depends on, I guess, how many workers end up dying in this first attack. Because Xiao Shui is coming in here. He's starting to pick off these workers. He's one-shotting workers one by one, picking them off. And dropping down to 28, that worker count. Even forcing the pull of SCVs into the main base. Which is never a good sign here for the Terran. He will send those back to work in just a moment. But coming on back in, he scans the natural. That's quite a bit of damage see the mutas are getting a little bit low but with the amount of damage he's done so far i think he's killed at least five maybe six scvs shashua is going to be feeling fantastic he no longer needs to deal any scv damage he just needs to prepare for the counter attack and that's what's going to be coming now jw moving out on the map he is reproducing some of these scvs he wants to get back up to that 35 count slowly but surely he has a factory on the way and his plus one armor is coming when the plus one armor finishes, it's going to be a big power spike here for JW. Um, if he can't get in on this third base before then, that'll be the moment. Like right when the plus one armor finishes is when you can start to break things like little batches of lurkers. You know, three, four, five lurkers uh, with a big spread of marines can actually take on that small force of lurkers. Now, Mutas are doing a great job tracking this. Bio ball, it's pretty hard actually to keep an eye on this. He's got a good position with the overlord here to see exactly where these bio forces move, and he's also seeing when more forces are moving out on the map. Small contingent of reinforcements could easily be picked up by these mutas if he manages to catch it. You can see he's spreading out these marines. Maybe gonna go ahead and check top left with that. Just see if he can find a hidden base, but Meanwhile, Xiao Shui is going to bring in a ton of lings. This is beautifully done. This is like Soul Key-esque, the way that this is executed. The way that he brought in the lings was not perfect, but it was good enough uh, that he's going to be able to clear everything. And now, JW sending in those three Marines. He is going to find some damage here, I think, killing off maybe three or so drones. These other drones need to be protected. Lings are going to be sent back here. These drones are going to go down as well. Wow, this turned out to be way worse than exp I, I thought. That was like seven, eight drones, something like that. That is crazy amounts of damage. And right as he's transitioning, he's making those uh, hydras for the lurkers. Really unfortunate that Xiao Shui didn't see with his two Lings, the Marines walking forward here. I think he was maybe 
uh, focusing on uh, something else, maybe in his main base. You know, building up his other buildings, you know, getting into his hive and that kind of thing. And he just completely missed this attack. And what an entire group of Marine Medic, you know, maybe 24 Marines and six Medics wasn't able to do. Three Marines and one Medic were. So it's a little bit funny sometimes uh, the way that works. Such a small little group of Marine Medic actually gets way more done than that big initial force. And now JW moving out on the map with confidence. Does he have enough to fight this Ling Muta army? Ling Muta gonna run in towards the natural. There's nothing in the bunker. So he can actually run up the ramp, start to hit these Marines that are popping out of the barracks and maybe go in with the Mutas and uh, block them from coming up this ramp. Okay, not bad, not bad. Lings are gonna get cleared out. But the Mutas are still in high enough number to one-shot Marines, so it's quite a threat in the main base. He's actually gonna leave, though, to follow these Marines. Start to pick off a, a few reinforcements. He should go after the Medics because they're open game right now. They're free game uh, out on the map at the moment. Oh no, Lurker's not done. Lurker upgrade is not done. Oh, this is really bad. He needs to actually make a full wall of Lurkers at this base. Otherwise, he's just gonna die. Make the wall, make the wall, the great wall of Lurker. Oh no. Okay. Wow, that was, that was some kind of crazy timing there for JW. He shows up, he knocks on the door, and right as the Lurker upgrade finishes, uh, he manages to get in there and kill all the Hydras beforehand. Now, this doesn't end the game because Xiao Shuai is just pretty darn good overall, controlling his Mutas, and he had the three Sunkens coming up. But that really did hurt. He lost a ton of Hydras. He doesn't have Lurkers up now. He's only just at this moment getting a few Lurkers out on the field. The Defiler is here with the Consume upgrade, but he can't really get aggressive. He really does just need to uh, transition out of this play. Oh, another dive on top of more Marines. He's actually taking a really reasonable fight, killing off a lot of this. Dude, Xiao Shuai is doing very good with these Mutas. It is impressing me a lot right now. Um, these Marines are looking pretty weak against, but they've already got plus one, plus one. They should be handling a lot better the small group of Mutas that Xiao Shuai can still field, but... He's really hanging on well. And now a vessel coming forward. A couple of vessels. We don't have lurkers over here just yet. Okay, there's the lurker. He needs to get the overlord over top of that. Otherwise, the lurker can just be irradiated immediately. Stack of lurkers over here. He will get the overlord into position there. Need to move that overlord. Oh, he's going to lose the over. I think he's going to lose the lurker. Nope. The lurker will stay. That's very important. He has no idea there's only one Lurker in that stack. Trying to look for kill on Lurker at the natural. But again, good positioning here from Xiao Shuai. He's ready in the main base as well. It really does appear that he's going to be switching into Hydralist Defiler now. Triple macro hatch in the main. Plus, he just finished up his Hydralisk range upgrade. So that is an easy tell to the fact that this is what he's doing. He's got one Defiler in the back, ready to throw down Dark Swarm, either in this base or jump through the Nidus and get another one in another base. Does he have Plague? He does. That is a big Plague. Dealing so much damage. And JW, he's going to be forced back, man. Xiao Shuai just slams the door in his face. Tells him to sell his Bibles elsewhere. Here we go. JW looking towards 12 o'clock. Has an opportunity to maybe irradiate this Defiler, but he really hasn't gotten much out of these irradiates, man. He is like getting close to max energy and he's gotten no irradiates down. There, he's even going to irradiate a single Scourge. Just because he can't find anything to irradiate as of yet. Irradiating a Hydra is probably the worst. Because the Hydra can just morph into a Lurker and be fine. More Hydras popping out here. And pretty soon, Xiao Shuai is going to start to spill out onto the map. Ooh, one vessel does go down. That is painful. We've got a third base 
coming up here for JW. A fourth is on the way as well. He's making battle cruiser. Does he not understand what's going on right now? Uh, a play that I've seen work very well for Terran against this style is drop double or even triple factory at the front. He does drop the double factory, okay? With the scans coming out, he realizes what's going on. Gotta stop making battle cruisers. They are no good in this match. I mean, maybe if you can fly them to here and just be annoying, but you can't hit any of these geysers uh, without fighting Hydra. So I don't know what he's gonna do with these BCs. They're probably just gonna float out and die if I, uh, if I had to imagine or had to try to guess what was going to happen. I think that's probably the way that they're going to go. A fourth base now on the way here for Shao Shui. Peeling off the eggs at the front. Opening up his natural entrance to flood out Hydra's defilers, lings, and lurkers um, in just massive, massive numbers. Now, starting siege mode, he hasn't begun plus one attack yet. Not even having an armory at the moment. A little bit rough for JW. It's very good to get those upgrades going early. If you know that you're going to have to fight a, t a Zerg player in a situation like this. Hydras need to be sent out. Lurkers need to burrow. Oh, the Lurkers are going to burrow. Getting some pretty good connections with those spines. But maybe he can actually kill this base. Hydras coming forward. There we go. He will prevent that. Tries to get a plague there. Both of the Defilers will eat... Uh, some irradiate and this one is going to die without casting any abilities that's a little bit sad can he target down the vessel no not targeting the vessel just gonna pull back with these hydras a lot more units coming out here this is where it gets to starts to get a little bit wild as a zerg player you start to have so many units it's kind of crazy hard to macro especially once this fourth base comes up it becomes really really nuts I've been accused online previously of mineral hacking because of how many units you can pop out with triple, uh, just three bases. And if you're only making Hydra Defiler, it's really, really wild how much you can produce. I'm gonna make a Dark Storm over here. You can see the battle cruisers are really not getting much done. There's a few uh, lurkers over in this spot. No Defiler over in to defend this, unfortunately. And all, it looks like all the Lurkers were actually um, dealt with by use of the Vessels. Now, Vessels are going to start to fall. Hydras can't, have to be respected. He can't just run in and fight this. Um, he does need to set up the, the tanks and have the medics healing these Marines. Very nice D-Matrix, but with the Dark Swarm here at the front, he's just going to put one more Dark Swarm right there and push right through, I think. Yeah, these Hydras are doing very well with their plus one, plus two armor. Plus two, plus two is done. There's no upgrades on these tanks, though, and another nice plague there. Doing quite a lot of damage. Another Dark Swarm should come up. And with that, Hydras are going to start to push everything back. Shao Shui is attacking over here to the center left. He's going to start to break through that area, creating another big problem, another headache for JW to deal with. While well, he's already trying to push in here. Lurkers coming out. Hydra's on mass. Two Defilers do get targeted immediately, but I think this tank army will end up getting killed in the end. Hydra's actually going to focus these down from under the Dark Swarm. Serving a dual purpose right now. Forcing the splash onto this tank and also killing off that one. Hydra's doing a lot of damage, killing off quite a few SCVs over here. The Muta's finally come out to play because there's not enough Marines to take this fight. As soon as they pick off that last Marine, are, it, are they going to pick it off? Wow, they finally do. They will be able to deal with that Siege Tank. And this base is now fully mining. Can transfer some of these drones over here to the mineral mining. Just get one drone per patch. is pretty darn good at this point. Um, you don't really need to add on too many more drones uh, to get maximum value out of those. You just need to have each one on a patch. Kind of a weak plague there, but it's fine. Another uh, Defiler is ready. I'm surprised to see so many Lurkers being made because we are so heavy into tank production now. But that's... Uh, I mean, we'll see how that goes. At least he'll be able to hold things back. You know, with that. 
uh, lurker number under dark storm it's pretty hard to irradiate through all of it another hydralisk and ling attack coming over here to the center left can he actually kill these two bunkers i think he will he's gonna get in here and defeat this the lurkers are holding their position so he can't actually break through right now as long as he keeps the dark storm going and jw is gonna lose a lot of his economy i think this is overall a big win right now for uh for Shao Shui, and he's gonna jump in on top of these tanks right as the marines try to run past they're gonna run forward and run right into these lings which are plus two armor they're gonna shove everything back this is really not going well for jw at this point if this lurker was burrowed he could have gotten a ton of kills but unfortunately just sitting there a little bit passive another dark or another dark storm and plague goes down on these units and all of these vessels are very low right now. You should be able to bring forward something to deal with these. There's some hydras coming from behind. Some Ling's gonna come forward to deal with the siege tank as well. And there it is, he will pick that off. Excellent moves from Xiao Shui. And unfortunately not mining with this one drone and not transferring his drones over here to the fourth. It means that the main is gonna mine out. He really does need to transfer these workers uh, sooner rather than later. Lurker here with zero kills. Might be able to get something, but a medic kind of thwarting his efforts at the moment. Some lurkers over here in the middle of the map being morphed, and a big defiler, Hydra, and oh my gosh, a lot of these could go down. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Quite a few vessels end up falling. Dark Storm goes down. Lurker's going to run forward. Big plague on a lot of this. Lurker does die under the dark swarm before it can burrow with triple tank no upgrades still though the tank is just not as good without the upgrades man it's such a valuable upgrade just plus one attack is so good marine force moving through the middle but you'll see that marines do not fight that well against pure hydra especially not hydra backed by lurker and we're about to finish up these two upgrades plus two plus three armor will make a huge difference in these upcoming fights. There's nowhere, not not really much further up the, the upgrade tree for JW to go. So as Xiao Shui starts to level it out, things are gonna get worse and worse for our Terran player. Coming in here, Crackling's gonna do their work, but this small hit squad of Marines is actually maybe gonna do quite a bit of damage. Ling's starting to clear things out. Drones are finally over at that base, so Xiao Shui needs to defend that. He does keep that alive and keeps three drones on the gas. Pushing in here. Trying to get into position. Maybe one more Dark Storm here. Oh, Dark Storm in behind. It's very good play from Xiao Shui. He's going to get these two lurkers on top of the mineral line. Forces the lift. And will force some more uh, irradiates out of this, I think. Trying to make a run for it with the SCVs. Most of these are likely to go down. Oh, a lot of damage on this. Oh my God, so many kills here. Eight kills on that. Six and two. Hydra's pushing up right now. Counterattack force going across the map. Does Shao Shui have forces to defend? He does, lots of them. So as he pushes forward and clears out this base, he's also gonna have the forces necessary to defend his natural and his fourth. I think Xiao Shui is just moments away from clearing this because the base over here, the third base is getting low and the Scourge are starting to pick off more vessels. The Hydras are finishing off these Marines. Uh, plagued as they are, they cannot really fight well. It looks like the command center may end up going down as well. Hydras here in the middle of the map, just taking fights against fire bats. It's not the time to be making fire bats. You make fire bats when you're ahead there, JW. Time to make tanks and marines. He's even gonna lift off his CC at the natural. Try to land it over here, I think, at the bottom center. This command center likely to go down. It's trying to be repaired, but the SCV is just a little bit too slow. Another base over here at the top left. Xiao Shui is taking full control of this game as his supply bounces upwards of 120 this cc will 
be saved, but 36 SCVs are all that remain. Still no upgrades for these tanks. And Hydras, with their plus three armor, are actually fighting reasonably well against tank. Like, we've got five tanks here. They barely killed any Hydras as they were running forward. And I was gonna just gun down all the tanks. GG is called. JW taps out another win here for the Chinese squad. Xiao Shuai takes it away. He's gonna remain the king until someone can dethrone him. Who will it be coming up here next? Blade is gonna be sent out. He's got his teeth, his vampire teeth are ready, sharpened up. He's got that little boomerang thing. That he throws, I can't even remember. I can't even remember the plot of Blade, man. What is the plot of Blade anyway? Something about turning everyone into a vampire? No, something about bringing back a really old vampire, if I remember. Maybe that was Blade 2. That was a very long time ago. But here in this game, and in this series, if you'll remember, round 1, Blade lost to Shao Shuai and then he beat Shao Shuai so they're one and one going into this match Shao Shuai in the king of the hill position blitz Y is the map and a forge expansion gonna be the choice out of blade Joshua sending out the drone down to the third base. He just wants to go ahead and take a drama, th a drama free third base. Doesn't want any of the smoke from that probe. Just going to go ahead and snag this at the proper time. Right as he's got 300 minerals with the overpool. Start to make some lings back at home. Get that natural on the way here sooner rather than later. And the Nexus is going to be thrown down immediately here by Blade. Photon cannon coming up. Just going to go ahead and grab that geyser. Before the, the extra base, in fact. That is interesting. Ooh, and he gets the probe too. Oh, you're not feeling good here as Blade right now, I'm telling you that. At least he saw the gas at uh, 2.30. 2.30 gas, if you take it this early. It is really strong to follow up with an incredibly quick Hydroden and very fast upgrades with Zergling speed. You can do all three at the same time. You can get Ling speed and a hydrogen and then you start the upgrades you can get and by all three i mean ling speed hydra speed and hydra range you can get all three of those upgrades um by the time you're ready to bust that's what the 230 gas gives you it just gives you that little extra burst of gas so you can get all these upgrades at an earlier timing and bust through. It doesn't seem like that's the plan though. Layer has just started. So with the layer coming up, what is Xiao Shuai's plan? Gonna go ahead and grab his metabolic boost. Is he just doing this to make sure that he has his uh, scourge out in time? Is that the is that the reason? As I feel like maybe that's the call. Like he just wants to have Scourge in time to deal with the very fast Corsair. Zealot heading around the, the left side of the map. There's nothing over here. Lings, this is a real problem with Blitz Y. You're so far away from your third base. It's really tough to defend both of these locations from Zealot splitting up and hitting both of these spots. So. Zealot's gonna come in here. Xiao Shuai, thankfully, gonna have his lings on the way already. So he probably will save all of these. Great control so far 
really stellar stuff out of Shaoshui. Look at this around here as well. Ooh. Damn, Shao Shui. Little handsome over here. Look at him. Handling this aggression super well. There's an overload about to pop as he sits stacked at 27 supply. 27 of 27 is a pretty annoying supply block. When you're dealing with zealots, it often happens, but you will get more overloads on the way now. Drones are popping. Zealots back at home, just holding down the fort. The Spire on the way. It's so tough to get everything going at the same time. But I feel like Xiao Shui has walked that line really, really well. It's one of the things that I struggle with the most when learning Zerg uh, versus Protoss is handling the first Zealot move out and getting the Spire on time. Because <laughs> right as the Zealots are hitting is right when the layer finishes oftentimes. And so if you're just not, you know, you're paying attention to the Zealot, you're like trying to get a good trade behind these mineral patches and you don't build the Spire, then you just lose a bunch of Overlords and things spiral quickly out of control. I'm gonna get one Overlord here. May get an Overload over here as well. Where is that one? It looked like it retreated pretty far back. So he may not be able to pick that up. What's the follow-up here from... Blade, it looks like a pretty standard follow-up and with the Scourge, he's going to be able to get in here and spot all of this. He sees the Templar Archives, the timing on that. He knows what he can get away with and when Templar with a real threat, a serious threat of Templar will be available. A few Hydras are starting to pop out now. Has not started this upgrade yet. Really important to start this upgrade. As soon as possible, Shao Shui does get that going. The Zealots are going to return home. Forcing out, I guess, enough units here from Shao Shui to make him you know, feel comfortable with his position. Sending all of that back home. I really like this wall from Shao Shui. If you didn't know, Zealots can fit through there. Or Zealots can't fit through there, but Hydralis can, and I don't think anything can fit through there. So this is a very nice little wall. I usually put an Evo here, but actually Zealots can fit through there. So that's a little bit rough. I like this a lot better. I wonder if he puts like another Evo here or something, or one here. Maybe put a Sunk in there. Sometimes the Sunk in's okay too. It doesn't make a block, but at least the Zealots have a hard time running through there. Overlords dying out on the map. Just two, though, so far. Five Corsairs looking for more damage. Gonna head down here to the bottom left. Just four Hydras to push them back, so they might just go for the uh, the Overlord kills now. Oh, Scourge are gonna catch this. Nice job. Picks off one of the Corsairs on the exit. Really good snipe there from Shao Shui. A lot of gateways coming up now. And I think we're just going to see Blade take a third. He doesn't really feel like he's planning anything sneaky. <clears throat> sneaky, like a DT drop or anything like that. It's really just feeling like a standard game out of him. And I'm happy to see it. I want to see a nice long game between these two. Especially on this map, we've had so many great ZVPs over the years. Over the year, I guess, that Blitzwise has been out. Ling's going to spot this Zealot attack coming in. Some drones transferring down. And the Hydras, uh, I, I guess, you know what? This is reasonable. I was afraid he didn't have like a great position to fight there. But with the Lings in the front and Hydras behind this, this is pretty difficult to break through this little hole. If they manage to get through into here and surround your army, things can get pretty bad. But seems like Shao Shui was ready for that. Nexus in the top left. It's a bit of a sneak Nexus. That actually shouldn't be allowed to go up. Because we don't have Templar over at that location. Yeah, he's actually just going to sneak this and maybe get away with it. Most Protoss players will actually take this base first. Because it's a lot easier to hold. Um, and you can push behind it, right? You take the base and then you push across this direction. 
but this is not what you expect overlord heading over towards the top left looks like it's probably sent to here just a spot and it will see the nexus coming up but i think it's a little too late to stop it now lurkers spawning out here on the high ground zealots pushing forward gonna force a few more lurkers to be made are there any templar no no temp no templar oh look the hydra back here is getting trapped Ooh, corsairs are going down en masse one dt gonna be thrown in let's get minced and the lurkers will finish what's that Oh, it's killing an egg. So you could hear that uh, cannon fire in the background. Fourth base on the way now for Shao Shui. She's setting up on this high ground. Now on this map, if I could just zoom out a little bit. If you can control this high ground and this high ground, you're feeling very good as Zerg to hold down five bases. Now, the problem with doing that is that the Protoss can do the same thing. And their army is a lot more mobile. So if they can get their army into these two positions, you know, cannons up here and over here uh, with this base online and that base online. I mean, Protoss can fight so long and they can harass you so much uh, during those fights that it almost feels. It, it, it really does kind of feel bad. It, it feels kind of rough. Like you need to take the center left eventually. If you're going to go for that play, because as we've seen in the past, uh, if the Protoss manages to take that center left and the Zerg is trying to mine here in the end of the game, storms are just inevitably going to wipe them out. Going to make it so hard for you to ever mine anything that I think the Protoss will win in that situation. All right, we've got some Corsairs heading out on the map. Looks like Mutas have just been made. Mutas looking for some snipes or maybe a dive into the main. There's only two cannons. Two cannons and a Templar. Is that going to be enough? Mutas looking for locations that they can snipe. Going for some snipes here and there. There's no more Corsairs on the map. They've all been picked off. Slowly but surely, Shoushwise whittled down that number. And it's not a small consideration that guy like it's tough it is tough to get rid of these corsairs when they're flying around just fighting down scourge and picking up overlords but if you can wipe them out then you can make this transition work got some overlords here in the main maybe a fake drop something like that he actually did force back the protoss army for a moment meters are coming in he's looking for these snipes can he get them oh boy Oh boy, he could have come from the high ground there and actually gotten a quick snipe on some of these Templar, but he doesn't go in. He's trying to buy time right now. Here he comes. Can I get the snipes? One, two, three. Okay, forces out some storms. Third Templar does not die, but it does lose its storms. There's only one more left. Blade in a precarious situation now. Can he get some more Templar out here to the front to join the party? Mutas coming in, starting to pick off some probes at the third. The cannons are not placed well enough to defend this. And so he will pick off quite a few. He's in a bit of a lead now in terms of this overall worker count. As he comes into the natural, start to pick off some uh, probes as well. This is actually really good. Big attack over here. Joshua holds the high ground. But Blade is just going to ignore that fact as he pushes up. Lands some beautiful storms on the rally point of Shao Shui. A lot of Hydras disappear in that fight. But the Zealot number is waning as well. And, huh. I guess he'll actually push through here. That one storm may be enough. That one massive storm on a huge group of Hydras at the rally point really hurt him badly oh he gets the two templar oh man shao shui although he lost that base maybe he can take this fight maybe he can win this this war here will force everything back trying to take another base shao shui has more mutas on the 
hunt now for some more probes he actually sends them into this base that's unfortunate loses that immediately moving up into adrenal glands now Shaoshui not content to sit on battle zerg for too much longer he wants to get into high play has drop coming falling all the way back now and unfortunately is behind on bases i mean this is not a good spot as a zerg player you're certainly not feeling good as the Protoss player takes the majority of the map. More probes going to be transferred over here to this mineral only. Pure Hydra on this high ground. No lurkers to be spotted. All the lurkers are over here. And he's not going to attack into that position. Oh no. Xiao Shui, he might actually lose from th just this alone. Hydras are going to get stormed to death. Oh my goodness, so many Hydras getting wiped out there. And he's jumping on top of these hatcheries. Are you kidding me? Shao Shui has to move. He's got to make a move here. He's actually coming forward. Where is he going with this counterattack? Right on top of the fourth base. He kills both of the hatcheries. Zealot, Dragoon, Templar making its way in towards the natural what is going on he turns around with the army he's gonna head back home so many lurkers here but not made in the correct place shao shui making a big mistake with the positioning of his lurkers in that last fight templar pushing in here hydras are actually fighting against the archon lurkers coming from behind and set up trapping the zealots in the top right hand corner which is kind of funny those zealots are severely trapped in that position another hatchery goes down what are we down to five hatchery production right here for our zerg player a lot of storms coming out on top of the lurkers as well lurkers gonna burrow and maybe finish off the 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 dragoons but man this is a bad fight for shao shui he just gets this base online but another full army of Protoss is making its way to the uh, front lines here. All right. A lot of these zealots are going to die. That's, of course, very good. But half the supply. Half. 70 supply to 149. How are you going to make this work? Let's take a look at these upgrades. We got 2-2 two, two done. And 1-0 oh for these lings. They are not going to be fighting well against the zealot and dt based army lurkers are getting picked off as well lurkers helping out quite a lot against this but oh my goodness look at all the zealots look at how low they are look at all the low health zealots in this fight that's crazy you're talking like two to three more lurker spines would have killed all the zealots here and he probably might have held this attack but at the same time, more stuff is coming across the map. He cannot take any more bases. Xiao Shui is just about out of this one. Blade going to take it home. He is going to be the king of the hill here in just a few moments. Some load ups. I don't know what that's all about. A drone being loaded up. Maybe he's going to try and take a hidden base, a, a island base. Well, that's not going to help if the Protoss just breaks right in to your natural more protoss coming forward just filing across the map the red of the protoss clan breaking through it's a little bit funny to see red protoss for the korean side and white zerg for the uh chinese side but there it is xiao shui taps out and blade takes it home he's gonna go for on to uh that king of the hill position he's gonna be uh facing up against the rest of this zer this uh mostly zerg chinese lineup who's gonna be sent out to face him next let's find out okay we are progressing going into a pvp now we have blade here in the bottom right hand corner Xiao Ge Ge in the bottom left. Little Big Brother. Ge, Ge is Big Brother. DD is Little Brother in Chinese. He is the Chinese player. Korean player. Blade. We all know what that means. Xiao Ge, Ge I mean... 
I wonder if he's able to take this game. Radeon PvP. Guys, you know I'm excited for this match, right? As a Zerg player, I bet you just can't wait to hear my takes on PvP. Um, if there's like a two gate or something, I might be able to say something. Or if they go both go into like mirrored builds, maybe we can. Maybe I can have some sort of commentary. I don't know though. This is gonna be rough. I apologize to all you Protoss players out there who play this constantly on the ladder. I know that. <laughs> I know that you Protoss players are playing this all the time on the ladder because I know how many Protoss players there are out there. Those of you who actually play consistently would know that you're probably gonna get at least like 50% of your games are gonna be versus Protoss. Um, <clears throat> let me know if that's your experience in the comments down below. Just so many mirror matchups. It really does feel like Blizzard f will give me more mirror matchups than anything else. Even if I'm playing Zerg, I seem to get way more mirror matchups. But maybe that's like, I don't know, some kind of bias. Like, you don't want to play mirror matchups, so that's what you get a lot. You end up seeing more, like, the things that you don't want to see. Or you notice more the things that you don't want to see when you see them. I'm not sure what that's called. Some sort of bias. We've got dragon range and dragon on the way. No range. Uh, here for Shango Gun. He's gone for a zealot. Initially. Cannot block the ramp. Starts the range now, but it's a little bit behind. His opponent. Makes sense, considering... You know, a... Uh, Unit was skipped here for Blade. No Zealot in the early game. Both players getting a second gateway. Everything looking pretty normal as far as I can tell. Pretty well mirrored builds. And we're going to be getting into this one. Hope you guys are doing well out there. I don't have a whole lot to talk about. Uh, and it comes to PvP, so maybe I'll just tell you guys a little bit about what's going on with me. Uh, I'm hanging out here in Canada right now. I'm on vacation. I've just been chilling, hitting the beach a lot. Uh, it's very hot here. Luckily, there's not many fires, so the, the smoke has been minimal, which is optimal for me. Uh, I am very prone to allergic reaction when it comes to smoke so i often don't like to be in canada during summer but it's really the only good time to be here um winter fall spring i mean it's all cold it's all pretty darn cold so i tried to line it up here so that i would arrive uh, at the time when it was least likely to be smoky but the most likely to have good weather and I think I nailed it pretty well uh, my wife and I are here in Canada and uh, yeah we've been having a good time I've been casting lots of games but spending a lot of time with family and friends as well we're gonna have this attack commence bit of a benefit of having your your gateways quite close I would say that this probably favors Blade. He's even going to go up to high ground now. He's got two more Dragoons than his opponent, but the Zealot does change the math a little bit. Depends on how much damage that does. Like if it starts to get attacks off and it will tank a lot, <clears throat> could be a little bit rough. We've got Observatory on the way for both players. In fact, Observer just about to pop out here for Blade. We got went for a little bit of a quicker I guess Robo then Shaogugu, but Shaogugu has more units. Six Dragoons and a Zealot versus six Dragoons and two Zealots. Two Zealots need to get down this ramp though. Oh, I'm gonna target down one Dragoon immediately. And he gets the second one right away. This is pretty good for Blade. 
Chalk was just trying to get in here with this zealot, but I mean, he lost two dragons and he only killed one. Trade of zealots back and forth there for these two players, and Shalgook is a little bit on the back foot right now. We'll be getting his robotic support bay, albeit a bit later than Blade. Blade already has his Reaver on the way, and he's going to start his Nexus as well. So, uh, quite a bit is in the favor of Blade, including Probe Count. As you can see, Probe Count quite a bit higher. He hasn't been able to start his Nexus yet, Shalgoga. You can see he's just a little bit behind in almost every way. I think aside from the overall Dragoon count, maybe a little higher here. Let's see. Yeah, one extra Dragoon, that's it. So, a tough situation for a Chinese player as he starts his Nexus. The Nexus is already halfway done for our Korean. And still a few extra probes in advantage here. He's going to try to close that gap, but with double Nexus, it makes it that much harder. A double Nexus for the opponent, I mean. Yeah, not too much going on right now. Both players gearing up for the eventual Reaver attack. Reaver Dragoon, always fun to watch, but... Exciting, anyway. I don't know about fun. Very exciting to watch Reaver Dragoon. Things can change so quickly. I think it's uh, something that a lot of modern RCS uh, games are lacking. Is units like this that can completely change the game. If, cert if a Scarab lands in the right spot. It can just blow up so many Dragoons, but if the Dragoons shoot down the shuttle with the Reavers inside, it can instantly turn into a win. So, that's something to consider when it comes to Brood War. There's no other game, I think, that has quite as much comeback potential as this game and in this matchup. Reaver is that comeback potential. The Reaver shots can absolutely change this game. He has uh, shuttle speed heading over towards the natural. Shao just doesn't have anything here right now. Oh man, he didn't spot this, did he? This is not looking good. Reaver here gonna get a big shot. Ooh, okay. Something like two workers just went down there. Oh man, that's a really good shot. Doing a ton of damage. He's gonna come through, get another great hit. Oh, bro, this is painful right now. I don't know how many kills that Zealot had, but I imagine it was quite a few. Scarab damage on the way as Shaguga tries to press in. He loses his shuttle, but looks like he killed the Reaver of his opponent pushing in slowly here. Can he get some shots onto this Reaver? Oh, his Reaver is just not shooting. Okay, he kills that Reaver. That's actually huge. Dude, is Shaga gonna do it right now? It's so close. The right, goons are falling in number. The shuttle gonna come back from the front line. Can he gun that down? Tries to go after the Reaver and gets forced back. I think this has gone a little bit too blade favored. Blade still has the shuttle and the reaver. And he could potentially block this. Incoming attack. Oh, and he's going to go for some more harassment. Nice job placing the reaver so close to the mineral patches. That he can fire over those minerals, but he doesn't really get a lot of damage out of it. You can see we're still pretty close in the overall worker count. Scarab damage. You rarely ever see it in PvP, but. Or really in any matchup. But here it is. Gonna add that extra 25 damage in just a moment. He's moving across the map. He will wait, I think, for a shuttle to join this fight. As soon as he has that shuttle, he can whisk the Reaver across the map. And start this engagement. He's actually going to go in with a few Dragoons first, surprisingly. Checking to see what's 
available here for Shalga Goods. Not a lot. He's got a few reaver or a few scarabs in that reaver. It's managed to crawl its way down the ramp, which is pretty important. He'll need that shuttle. There it is. He's going to pick it up, picking up that reaver, sending it across the map. All he needs to do, drop the reaver one time, hit this reaver with his reaver, and he should be good to go. Oh, okay. You think he's going to lose the shuttle? No, nope, not quite losing it there. Pretty bad engagement overall for Shao Guga. Shao Guga wanted to just gun down that shuttle immediately, but he doesn't get the kill. There's way too many dragoons now. The Reaver did just enough damage for Blade to push through here. There's just enough dragoons as well to take this fight. GG is called. Shao Guga taps out. And now a Korean sitting on top this hill two games in a row. Blade has managed to take back this series. It's now two all going into game number five. China has to make it happen now. They still have a couple of chances. It is uh, first to four, but this is dire. Shao Shui can only take you so far. You can only carry so hard. Somebody else has to step up. Who's it going to be? Here he is, the chosen one, Messiah, takes the field. This is going to be going up against Blade in the bottom left-hand corner. The king of the hill, the top of the heap. He's already managed to take home two wins for this Korean squad. Can Messiah shut him down? We've got nice little PVZ for our fifth game on Apocalypse. And if I could just take a moment to talk a bit about this map. The control of these plateaus is of primary importance. Both players are going to be vying for those positions. What often becomes the case in this matchup specifically is as the Protoss player is taking their third, many times the Zerg player will be able to contain them from this high ground and it can become very difficult for the Protoss player to break that contain and get back out on the map. Hiding a probe right here. What is he gonna do with that? I think he's waiting for the Nexus first. That is interesting. First drone heading out on the map. Nexus first, potentially? No. He gets in there. He sees the spawning pool and the timing of that. Realizes he needs that forge. ASAP. He's going to start the forge. I think he'll go forge Nexus cannon. But will he be able to get any cannons or enough cannons up in time to deal with these lings that are about to pop? He does not have the money for the cannon, but the links have not popped yet. As long as he starts the cannon before the links pop, he should be fine. Although we have seen links get in before in a previous game, just running straight down in this exact same position, able to make it in and deal that damage. This time blocking with the probe. He's trying to slow this down just a little bit. And he's doing a pretty reasonable job of it. These links are actually going to chase. The probe and so this I mean, blade's gonna be fine now messiah only making the very bare minimum number of lings he's figured out that this is most likely a forge fast expand and that thus he does not need extra defenses he's gonna be starting his layer here in just a moment with his three base rolling i think we're in for a nice uh, mid to late game Zerg versus Protoss potentially uh, of course there is a vertical wall in so whenever there's a vertical wall in it makes it a little bit easier for the pro for the Zerg player to bust uh, there's just certain like the the length of the building or the the width of the building a little bit bigger than the height of the building and also coming down 
in order to hydralis bust cannons below you is a bit harder than trying to bust left to right. Don't ask me to explain it all or the, the exact reasons why, but just trust me, it is a bit more difficult. We've got a layer over here at the third. That's an interesting layer position, but this has been afforded to him because he was forced to take the third over here. Or he's forced to take this base before his natural. So he can hide his layer here. Zealot is heading out on the map, which could just reveal this. Link speed on the way. More links coming. Where to place the spire in this position, though? It's an interesting question to ask. Oh, great catch there. Almost catches the Zealot trapping it against that wall. I'm gonna send Lings around the back already. Getting prepared to surround and kill this Zealot. Oh, he's done a great job of this. He finishes off that Zealot easily. Second Zealot gonna make its way over here towards the natural, but Ling speed is done. And the Overlord gonna spot these heading back home. Maybe he can run forward and catch the probe at least. Making the spire, where is it at? Here in the main. I personally like to place my spire here because it's too often, I think. Oh, run by here. Making its way into the main. It's too often that zealots run by and kill your spire in the main. I just feel like spire here is so hard to get a good surround on uh, with the zealots. And you're usually gonna have sunkins and stuff in the natural that can help defend that. Like sunken line here. Hatcheries and, and Hydroden here. How are you going to get back there to kill that? Very unlikely. And the Spire being picked off. I mean, it just... It devastates you as a Zerg player sometimes. If the Protoss player knows what to do to punish you when you don't have that Spire, it is incredibly painful. We've got Scourge coming out in two different areas. Um, I think the Overlord will fall, but nothing that... The Messiah himself can't handle. Zealot making its way over here. Does take a little trade, killing off two lings, but... Falling before his time. Oh, did he actually pick off the... I think he got the Corsair. I might have missed that guy, sorry. I do think that I missed that. He might have been paying attention to something else. As was I, watching the Zerglings run around in the main and... These links kill this zealot over here. Took away my attention from the Corsair that just went down. I'll try to picture and picture that actually, because that's kind of important. We've now got two Corsairs here in the natural. A second Stargate finishes up. Hmm. I don't know about this. Oh, he's going to get in here and scout that. Oh, that's big. That's really big. He has Flyer Carapace on the way already. As another or an evolution chamber coming up as well. Do you just pump pure Hydra or are we going to make a lot of Scourge? Seems like he wants to make quite a few Scourge, but it is going to mix in some Hydras as well. Look at how many Scourge are headed out on the map. 12 Scourge. You should be able to deal with this full complement of Corsairs that's coming out in a moment with their plus one. Um, there's going to be like seven, maybe eight, nine Corsairs really, really quickly. Even has the Templar Archives just about done though. And it's only seven minute 40. I don't know if he can afford this, but he's going to try to get Storm at the same time. Gateway's coming down. Here for Blade. Blade moving out on the map. His Corsair number is only six. I don't know about this, guys. Attacking him with just six Corsairs, even though he has plus one, the Scourge are going to massacre if he doesn't control absolutely perfect. Zealots are sharking around the map. Corsairs coming in. Scourge going to hit this from the side. Here we go. Big Scourge connections. It's a lot of these Corsairs. Not getting a lot of kills, but getting a few to force all this back. No third base just yet. First Dark Templar out on the map. Corsair's not getting any work done so far. But clearing out a lot of those Scourge. Templar. 
storm upgrade is coming and more gateways are being thrown down here by blade blade gonna go to eight gateway very quickly he's adding on a bunch of cannons to make sure that he doesn't die before storm is done and templar are ready a uh, very smart pragmatic decision from him because absolutely we could have seen you know a big attack come out of messiah now however he does not have overlord speed which is definitely a problem it's kind of shocking actually that he doesn't have that maybe he f just completely forgot i can't imagine why he wouldn't want to take that upgrade so important for getting your fourth base online if you want to get this fourth base up for sure as messiah but you just can't do that if you don't have an overlord in that location they're going to be able to deny that fourth base for a very long extended period of time third for blade coming up a sneak base here uh in the bottom right that's actually interesting remember guys i was telling you the problem big problem with this map is that this base gets taken by the protoss and then zerg holds this area but you know what if you take this first and it's kind of a sneaky base then even if they come up here and, and take over this area as long as you've got some templar down here to defend this area and you can try and take this base as well you get up to four it's a lot easier to break out that way it's not as urgent uh, or as urgently necessary to break out uh, as if you're just sitting on three bases looks like the drone gonna die over here zealots making their way in to deny that fourth great play from blade to shut that down mutilus transition is coming you rarely see it uh, when your opponent has gone so heavily into corsair with two stargate play but he managed to kill enough corsairs and he's figured out that blade is not making more of those so there is a p possibility he could come across the map and just snipe a bunch of templar and win the outright fight like if he came into the natural right now and killed all these templar when blade wasn't paying attention that would be huge now jumping on top of these corsairs again is he gonna get more kills blade trying to make a run for it are there hydras over here no he probably won't get all the kills okay if he just flies right into the hydras okay he saw one muta at least here's the mutas though they're coming in he's gonna go for the kills it seems like the chinese players really love this move this time gonna work out better than normally though going after these storms he gets every single templar he loses all the mutas but he gets every templar and that is exactly what messiah was looking for praise be oh lord as he pushes forward mass hydra just gonna go up against basically zealot dragoon with plus one plus one plus one attack is just finished now for messiah as he starts plus two ten more hydras in production this is gonna shove forward here i don't see any templar coming out there's two in production but they're only halfway done and the hydras are gonna get on top of these dragoons i think this might be lights out this might just be lights out for our Protoss. He's diving forward, killing off everything. Look at how quickly these Dragoons just melt. The Templar pops out on the outside of this wall. The worst possible place that that could possibly uh, spawn in. And GG is called Messiah. Takes this one away. Messiah spawning in the top left-hand corner. All he needs is one more win is chinese this chinese squad will take home the victory for round number two we'll go into an ace match stone spawning in the bottom left hand corner holding the line for the korean squad he needs to turn this series around if they don't want to go to the ace match he's going to be sending out his first probe to begin what's it going to be is it going to be a forge fast expand here on citadel or a gateway expand it's looking like a forge expand actually you know what sending the pro back that's more gateway isn't it i've been playing recently guys uh, if you can't tell on vacation right now it's been a minute 
it's definitely been a minute i think with the gateway you actually send the probe back i'm not a protoss player but i i think this is how you know what they're gonna do is yeah they send the probe back if they if they send the probe out on the map then it's going to be a, a forge most likely because they want to get that scouting information figure out how many cannons they need to make right away in whereas when you're making the gateway you don't really have a lot of options you just build zealots then you need to f find out if you want to send them across the map or just keep them at home and that's like, like you don't have to get in there that quickly i like what stone is doing he just scouted right here knowing that the overlord should be in this position right as the probe got in there and now he's going to scout over here to the top right and he might see the overlord in his receding vision no not gonna see the overlord but he gets in there he sees no creep and he will go ahead move over to the top left hand corner and scout the opponent first zealot is about to pop spawning pool not quite finished just yet was a uh, hatchery first this time from messiah one of the first hatchery firsts we've seen i don't know that sounds like a weird sentence but that's it is what it is first hatchery first uh in zvp here out of the chinese messiah maybe feeling a little bit more comfortable to hold any aggression that might come out from stone and stone i mean he's gonna send his zealots back home because there's nothing for them to do in this main base as the links are popping out we'll just go ahead and retreat for now what's he gonna be doing with this gas he doesn't actually have the mineral income to do anything with this right now so i'm a little bit concerned the speed of that gas and we're just gonna end up putting that we can more ling some overlords on the way third hatchery at 12 o'clock as well could go for the probe kill doesn't actually uh, invest in that um does pick it off now though and uh, the zealots here between the buildings are a bit of a nuisance more lings coming out a lot are coming across the map right now and he might be able to force a shield battery or a pull of probes potentially no try no attempt to run by i thought he might try to run by these zealots when they came out to fight he's done quite a bit of damage to the gateway the cannon is going to start this is okay no big deal right now for either player it's a good amount of lings but we're gonna have enough zealots to deal with it very soon and so messiah will just fall back stone on the aggression now with lings and ling speed on the way he's going to be calling the bluff here are you actually going to uh walk into my natural or are you not are you actually going to make lings or are you not and messiah i mean he did not skip on lings he's made plenty of those he will get the surround on a lot of these zealots. He should be picking these off here in a moment. Stone is doing the absolute best that he can to trade with these lings, but that's a little bit too many. And ling speed is just about to finish. As soon as it finishes, I think he's just going to wipe this out. He's got three more sets of lings, and I'm very shocked that Stone wants to take this fight. He's going to come right in here. He's traded well enough, I guess. Oh my god, the lings are not really fighting. It's a little bit bad. This, uh, drones actually come out and try to mess things up. Try to mess up the micro of the zealots, but... Oh! Okay, he does save that drone. That was very important. Gotta keep those alive. Lings are able to clear all of that up, and... I think Messiah's gonna be feeling okay about that. He lost one drone, and he had to make quite a few lings, but... Clearing out all the zealots. And he's got his spire on the way, no problem. I think he feels alright about this. Yeah, Stargate nearing completion, but it's not far off from where the spire is at at the moment. 
extra hatcheries coming up now. That tightrope has been walked on either side. Both players finding their way into a healthy mid game. Photon cannon coming up at home. Making sure that he's not going to lose any Corsairs immediately to, Cors or to, to Scourge. Citadel finishing up as well. And six hatch has begun. Messiah, no Hydroden just yet. Now you can go six hatch, build a sunken colony, and do just muta defense. Muta scourge defense is fine. Is the scourge almost finding the corsair? The corsair is going to make its way into the natural. It's been spotted now. Scourge are all the way on the other side of the map scouting things out and what will this uh corsair do is it gonna actually go for a kill somewhere on one of these overlords seems like no seems like it's just gonna go back towards this natural try to obfuscate territory on in the middle of the map we've got plus one armor coming up from messiah seems to favor that upgrade quite a bit hydrogen there it is Hydroden there, probably an Evo Chamber set down in just a moment. We don't already have one over here. Seems like we don't. There's that Evo Chamber. Start to get these Hydra's upgrades rolling. Very important to do so as soon as possible. So plus one is nearly complete. Quite a bit more drones popping out. Some Scourge as well. Seven more drones in production. He's going to go up to, I assume, about 45 drones. And with his Mutalisk army, try to keep the Protoss player at bay. That's a lot of Scourge as well, by the way. Holy. Is he actually going to try to go for the main? It's a, it's a possibility here. Let's see if he tries it. Ooh, DT getting some work done. Three kills so far. Four kills so far. Very, very good damage for that one DT and now he can go hide up here and keep the pro the Zerg player off of an extra base because we're not building we're actually not even gonna build overlord speed again how crazy is that he comes into the naturally sees the mutalisks and Messiah is just gonna go he's just going to go more cannons to start up in the main base he's going up to four cannons here guys there's only three corsairs this is a scary moment can he actually overcome the forces in the main base i'm gonna go ahead and start to gun down these cannons all the corsairs fall i think the messiah might have just done it there is one archon but one archon i mean you're not gonna get in here you're not going to get on top of these mutas as long as the zerg player is paying attention to them there's the only area you can walk through is there uh, it's not a good look for stone stone losing so many probes right now dude he's lost so much if he goes after the archives i think that would be the best just actually just focus the archives just like just kill it just, just get it do it kill the archives he's not gonna do it Dark Archon has been made, but it's a long way away from Maelstrom. Um, yeah, just target that. Target it. Get it. Do it. Do it. Yes, Messiah. You are the chosen one. You can do it. Oh, more Mutas joining this bunch. We've got 11 now. Thinking about trying to fight the Archon. That's not a good idea. I don't want to see him try that. That's always a recipe for disaster. Oh, oh my god. Oh my. Seven kills. Just like that. See, I told you I didn't want to see him do it. That is, um, ouch. That's painful. Well, now Messiah can, I guess, worry about making more Hydras. Six more Mutalists about to pop out, though. He is so far ahead. It's, uh, it's not even funny. We're going to have a hard time doing anything in this game from this position as the Protoss player. Zerg is a million, billion miles ahead right now. DT looking for 
Uh, looking pretty puny with these four kills, dude. Barely did anything this game now. Like, it was looking nice earlier, but those four kills look like a pittance at this point. Flying in, gonna get a whole bunch more kills. He's not even going after the cannons because he knows he doesn't really have time, I guess. Um, probe kills are gonna be better. And I guess he could kill the cannons now. Uh, totally optimal, but I think he's killed enough probes at this point. He killed like 10 probes. Mitas are absolutely worth it. I was kind of questioning whether diving back in with the Mitas is going to be a good idea. I'm building more, but that paid for itself easily. And look at the overall supply. 111 to 79. Nearly a 40 supply advantage right now. That is painful considering that uh, the Zerg or the, the Protoss units are by and large two or more supply per unit. I think the Archon is four, right? Because each Templar is two. And Hydras are one supply. So generally, the I mean, the Zerg should be behind in overall supply. But when they've got this much of a lead at this point in the game. You know it's not looking good. We have Maelstrom now. So if Messiah tries to dive in with these Mitas, I mean, he can throw those away, get no damage whatsoever, then still be 100% fine in this game just because of how well this is all gone so far. Seven kills now in this Dark Templar. He's gotten a few more here and there. Diving into the main base, going after some more probes. Just killing the gas, gas probes here. And, uh, you know, if Stone doesn't notice that or, you know, put some more probes on gas, it's giving me a lot of trouble. Puts one more on gas, but that's not good enough. We need three. Very important that we get more gas going. And if he just forgets about that, okay, he did put the third on. That's very important. 40 supply. Nearly 40 supply advantage. I just make their way to the middle. Mutas are two supply apiece. So that is something to consider. Let's see. Ooh, there it is. Maelstrom. Get up. Get up. Oh my god, you missed. How did you miss that? Okay, actually, it didn't miss that bad. I thought that was a, a total whiff, but actually, he does deal a lot of damage with that. Running forward, he's going to try and snipe the Templar. Templar go down initially. i just going to start to push forward now. There is one Maelstrom on some of the back line of Hydra. Hydra's backing up, allowing the Zealots to come to them. No more storms available. There's one more storm here in this fight, but Hydras are just going to shove through. This is way too much Zerg. Not enough Protoss to deal with all of that aggression and GG. Stone taps out. Messiah takes the series down. We're gonna go to an ace match, boys. Here we go. And it all comes down to this Shao Shui in the top left hand corner. Blade in the top right. These guys have been back and forth and back and forth all night long. The total series between them has been, what's this? One win for Shao Shui, two wins for Blade. If I have that correct. So Blade has come out on top so far against Xiao Shui. Let's see if he can take this final win. He pops in and sees the the creep. Blade does, but he doesn't check to see what the actual build is. And it's gonna be a nine pool with an, ex an extractor trick to get out a 10th drone. He doesn't need to take this hatchery right now because his lings are going to be really fast. He's kind of faking it here, Shao Shui's playing that he wants to take the space. Look at this. He's coming back in. He's selling this really, really well. He's like, oh, I'm going to take my natural. If you go into the main, I'm going to take my natural. He is not going to take his natural. He is building six lings right now. And he just built a nexus. This has gone off without a hitch. Got him. As soon as he sees this ling, these lings, his heart is going to sink in his chest. This is a bad situation right now for Blade. 
he starts a cannon can't afford to start a second he's got to pull all the probes here all the probes need to come he's gonna leave three in the main base to try and uh, continue mining but he has to hold this off with pure probage that's not a great start that is not a great start gonna dive on top of the cannon can he get the kill the cannon's gonna go down so fast the lings are falling as well he needs to start another cannon right now he starts it he does start it he's gonna get a surround on this last ling he kills it their probe goes down this ling gonna be annoying running up into the main base now no more links are coming, thankfully. Here for our Protoss player. He's managed to hold on, but at great cost. The nine pool paid off dividends here. Huge dividend payment there for Xiao Shui, the investor in the, in the nine pool. He just got a fat dividend check. And it was payable in probes. Plenty of damage to the mineral lines of Blade. But he does have a quick Nexus. Don't forget. This Nexus was very fast. And with the quick Nexus comes double probe production. So that is a factor still. Xiao Shui, though, it's got to be feeling good confident in this game he's gonna take a hydralis den now knows that blade cannot afford to send out additional probes to try and get things like scouting he's gonna be slowed down in his gateway timing and his corsair will be late you can also see everything that's going on in the main try to delay the gas with this zergling you know try to hit these gas probes a little bit and slow down that gas mining. Look at him. He's pulling another probe off. Blade knows what he's up to. He's like, okay, you're trying to slow down my gas, aren't you? I'm going to pull one of the probes that's not a gas mining probe to chase this. I think you can just fight that now. Yeah. Do a little damage. You got to run away, though. The probe will lose to the, to the Zergling there. Zergling going to run away. Try to get some heals going. Will win the fight again. So you got to pull away. Very annoying stuff here for our Protoss player. It's actually going to send the probe over to the natural. Zealot going to come up into the main to deal with this. And that's exactly what Xiao Shui wants. Xiao Shui is just praying that he keeps everything back at home. Like, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Chase my Ling the main while well, he lost it. That's unfortunate. Now the Zealot can come out. There's a second Zealot here as well. There's only one cannon though. Because he doesn't want to over-defend. If this was a macro follow-up, he would be in a lot of trouble if he over-defends here. So he's going to send out two Zealots. It will be found by these Lings. The Lings are going to get this around. Deal quite a bit of damage. Actually force the Zealots back home. Will he build a second cannon? He's trying to cut some corners. I totally understand. He makes a Robo. Okay, well. You know what? The Robo might actually be the saving grace. If he if he built Robo and he actually started cannons, he might have actually he might live. But I don't think he's going to. The Hydras are on the way. There's the second cannon. Like the Robo plus like when the Reaver comes out, a second a third cannon. Okay, I like it. I like it. Is it gonna finish in time though? Hydras, he's waiting for range. I think the range finishes before the cannons do. Robo, like, Reaver comes out way faster than Storm. So you can actually get the Reaver out in time to help hold the, the Hydras if you do it correctly. But here he comes with the Hydras now. Zealots are going to come out to fight. Hi uh, cannon going to go down immediately. Second cannon under fire now. Actually, the Zealots are being picked off first. Now the second cannon is going to come under fire. Uh, all the Zealots have been cleaned at this time, so... The cannons in the back line are all that remain. He's going to try and put down another cannon. He has the Robo. Can he make a Reaver? He can't afford a Reaver right now. He really needs to get a Reaver production, a Reaver production started. Cancel the air upgrade. Uh, weapon upgrade, please. Blade. He's actually going to lose the cannon. Oh, another cannon is going to finish. More probes are coming out to fight this. Another cannon finishes up. 
Oh, this one's gonna go down as well. The uh, Hydra's just focusing that down. Cannon in the back line, gonna finish with nine HP. It gets targeted immediately. That's gonna go down. Reaver finally starts, but it's too late. Xiao Shui takes this victory. Dude, if Blade had started his Reaver immediately when that robotic support bay finished, that's a fast building to build, by the way. If he started that, and made it like send it out to the front just cancel something in the main like cancel a corsair cancel um i don't know cancel your uh, attack upgrade you know whatever you need to do you just have to survive this if you get a reaver out and you get one decent shot on these um hydras you can even block body block with the probes right you body block for the reaver with the probes and the reaver ends up killing off a bunch of hydras the cannons can warp in and you can survive this is actually a playable position but he didn't make the reaver in time he lost the cannons too quickly it's all due to that early run by that happened because of the nine pool and it's really on blade honestly because from what i understand about this matchup and guys i'm not a pro by any means all right i just want to preface with that when you send your probe across the map with a forge fast expand you need to check the main if you don't see the second overlord if you see a second overlord coming then you know it's not a nine pool but if you don't see an overlord then you need to go into the main and check the pool if the pool is there instant cannon before nexus and you will be fine but if you don't check and he goes for nine pool like we just saw you want to be sneaky hiding the probe and blocking the hatchery Xiao Shui will punish you and that's what we saw that's how this series ends guys with a chinese victory so so far week 80 we had korea take that series week 81 china firing back i'm really looking forward to doing more of these videos guys thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this series and i'll see you in the next one